Welcome to Gaming Morning Show, your favorite morning radio show that plays games. We're like an FM morning radio show, and since it's a weekday, we're on your favorite platform, just like we've been Monday through Friday since 2020. And of course, on our website, GamingMorningShow.tv. So whether you're able to join us in the chat, or are lurking or listening, we're happy you're here. Who knows what today will bring? Maybe there will be amazing food inventions. One hand for the tacos this is, one hand right below the taco ready to catch. Eat the crunchy taco, catch it, soft taco second. That is brilliant. I mean, we do like a good food topic. Put it on a pancake. Or maybe we'll celebrate someone's birthday. Today, uh, actor Peter Sarsgaard turns 52. <laughs> He's the pirate now. <laughs> or meet a star of stage and screen. Says I, gaming, doc gaming, sports doc gaming. <laughs> oh shoot, I have too many names. Is that Keonsta for Reefkin? Or maybe I'll get to leave this box. I'm pretty okay in here. Okay, let's not get too ridiculous. I'm never getting out of here. But that's okay, because I'm here with you. Every weekday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific. And whatever the heck time it is in the UK. Your search is over. Beep, beep, longer beep. You found Gaming Morning Show, and we're getting started right now. Mm-hmm. Morning! Gamer, welcome in this gaming morning show. So glad that you are here. It is Thursday, April 6th, 2023, and we are on the air for the next three hours up until 9 a.m. Pacific time to bring you things like gaming morning show, morning gaming news. That's going to happen in 15 minutes from now. We're going to bring you crazy hand signals trying to tell you something, and you're going to be like, What is he doing? And you're going to be like, I don't know. We're going to try to figure it out, and then you're going to hire a committee and a private investigator, and you're going to try to decipher things. and in reality, he's just spreading cash and money and cash money. <laughs> that's like that's like when the, someone's doing like an interpretive dance, and but they're uh, also supposed to have like a narrator for it. But those two didn't meet prior to the whole thing starting. That's what we just did. Can we play uh, a GMS version of telephone where someone does an interpretive dance and then someone interprets it? And then someone has to do an interpretive dance based on that description, and then we'll compare the dances. I think that's exactly what we should do. We should we should pull all of our resources <laughs> together for that particular mission. That'll be so worthwhile. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nuts, Ever, though? That'd be pretty fun. <laughs> I don't know if it would work very well. No, no. Mm. I don't know. You can almost do it on on stage during like a, an improv thing. You know? Yeah. Someone someone does a dance like. The people participating have to be off stage where they can't see or hear, right? So I, someone does a, a dance. Per, person A and B are on stage. A does a dance, and then B and C are on stage. B describes the story, and then C does a dance. That'd be great. Uh, also, we'll put C in a. Gosh, what were the what were the phrase where it's like uh, on those dating shows? Like so and so is in a sealed phone booth and cannot hear anything that they're saying <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> Down said like Gartic phone, but with dance. Yeah, that's kind of what we're thinking. Kind of. Uh, it's gonna be a good show, all things considered. That's Sports Gaming left side of your uh, screen. I'm Hefty Goof. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, we'll uh, work on our dances and see if we can get back to you. Uh, it's also good to see Kalaf, who's in the chat. Uh, Downs signed in first, which is good to see you. Thank you for opening up the show. First! And then uh, Kalaf, our head of research and development, has checked in as well. Thank you so much. You can always uh, give us a thumbs up on things like Facebook Gaming and on YouTube. That always does a lot for our show. Uh, we have birthdays coming up at 6.50 this morning, so we'll tell you the video game Headlines you need to know in 15 minutes, and then wish people happy birthdays coming up at around 6.50 this morning. Uh, got together last night, uh, Sean and I. Uh, I don't even really remember remember why. Was it simply just to share desserts? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Yesterday was an adventure. Your wife was a, a rock star. My wife's uh, car just decided that, hey, you know the one thing that you really want a car to do, which is turn on and be able to move? It decided, it's like, I'm not going to do that today, but I'm going to wait until you are as far away from the house as humanly possible to tell you that. And so uh, I was very unavailable, and your wife went out and uh, picked up my wife, got the car towed to the... De- You're just a rock star yesterday. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was fortuitous timing. 
since she she had the day off and was able to just come take care of it. It was a pain though. I, I this is probably gonna be more pain because we haven't even talked to the <laughs> talked to the mechanic yet. We don't even know what's wrong with it. So hopefully not too yeah. much pain. But I mean, come on, we're not we're not the thief. The anti theft device isn't supposed to protect us from using our car. <laughs> Stop stealing your car. <laughs> We actually had a, well, she had a Honda back in the day, and uh, it, apparently this kind of car that she had was, like, very commonly stolen, and it was because something with, like, the keys were somewhat interchangeable, which, that's a whole different side chat where it's like, what? But apparently the keys were somewhat interchangeable. The, the key's basically a flathead screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> kind of was, I guess. Just anyone can open your car. Uh, and so it disappeared, and, and, sh and she called me. We were uh, uh, very, well, not very early, but earlier in our relationship. And she's like, um, someone's, someone stole my car. And I was like, you know, I did that thing. I was like, wow, that sucks. Are, are you sure? Like, you know, what a weird question to ask. It's like, I mean, that's the best thing I can say. She's like, I've looked everywhere. That's not where I parked it. So we went home and everything like that. We got a call at like 2 a.m. It's like, hey, we found your car. Oh, they had parked it in a mall parking lot. We went down there, and the only thing they had taken was this this radio. And and they they extracted the radio from the dashboard in the most polite possible way. Everything was in good shape. We just picked up the car and went home. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. No anti-theft device in that car, though. No. No, just the screwdriver. Just the flats. That's it. Just <laughs> a standard... Uh, two dollar screwdriver in, in your arm standing in the way of owning that car. Uh, we'll get into our question of the day in a second. It's National Burrito Day, National Siamese Cat Day, National Student Athlete Day, New Beers Eve. I like New Beer. That's a pretty good one. New good one. Beers Eve. Uh, it's Army Day, Boring Op It's Syndrome Day. California Poppy Day, Drowsy Driver Awareness Day, Fresh Tomato Day, Hostess Twinkie Day, International Day of Sport for Development and Peace, Jump sport. Over Things Day. <laughs> we should be playing like Mario or something today. Like, boing. yeah, I want to jump over things. Uh, National Acai Bowl Day. Is that how I say that? I always forget. Yeah, I think so. National forget too. Berry Bowl Day. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Berries. Uh, it's also National Alcohol Screening Day. There's more. We'll get to those a little bit later. This hour, we'll tell you about this, the well-traveled porcupine, which was, by the way, one of my favorite adjectives to describe a porcupine ever. Well-traveled, uh, relocated from a hotel parking lot, and we'll tell you next hour how a piranha-like fish was caught in South Carolina. Uh, that's coming up. But our question of the day chat has to do with, uh, well, pasta. That's right. We're uh, wondering, it's National Carbonara Day, which, as far as I know, is something that typically goes on pasta. So we're asking you, chat, what goes best on pasta? Is it is it sauce? Is the answer sauce? I mean, it could be for many people. Uh, I know someone, not going to name any names, uh, who probably Bob. would say no. <laughs> would you just call out Bob? Yeah, it's for not sure Bob. Bob. You dummy, Bob. Ooh, he thinks you're you're going after his intelligence. He does kind of look a little salty this morning. Yeah, he's been kind of grumpy on average lately. Right? Yeah. We're not making this up. Hmm. Maybe we need hmm. to increase the oxygen flow to the to the box. Right here, I'll, I'll turn it up a little bit. Beep, beep. I turned it up. Too Plenty much. of air in here. No need to worry. That was instant. That, that's a fast oxy oxygen flowing machine. Not really. Okay. Oh, Jack. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> uh, do you have something that you absolutely love going on pasta? Um, no. No? It, I don't think so. Because I like most kinds of pastas. Even, even like relatively plain pastas. Like, pasta a la ryan right with like just like butter and um what what do you do like butter and pepper did you see all ryan yeah that's pasta a la ryan that's a famous <laughs> famous italian dish uh, yeah, butter and parmesan is the best thing that yeah. can go on on pasta 
See, that's perfectly fine too. I don't, I don't dislike that at all. But I like a good marinara sauce. I like a, I really like a good like homemade Alfredo sauce. But that usually requires me having to make it, and then you see how much butter you put in it, and you go, I can't, I can't, I can't eat this anymore. <laughs> but it's so good. <laughs> I remember we did one of those things from like Olive Garden where you buy like the meal you're going to eat there, but it's like, and you can choose a meal to take home and they'll put it in like the plastic container and they give you the reheat instructions. And I was like, oh, well, I'll totally get like some fettuccine Alfredo out of all of these choices. And then I saw what the Alfredo looked like prior to being prepared. And I was like, I don't want to do that again. Why'd they just put a stick of butter in here? Oh, that's the sauce. That's the Alfredo. Okay. Uh, it's probably better for you not to see how the sausage is made in that circumstance. Yeah, for sure. Just walk away. Sure. Walk away. Uh, good morning and nice <laughs> chat to those joining us. Nice chat. Uh, we have Downs, as I mentioned, Kalaf here. Uh, Element of One, good morning, boys. Will you guys be off observing Good Friday tomorrow? We will be on the air tomorrow, so you do not have to worry about us not being here for you tomorrow. Uh, Copia's here. Good morning and nice chat. The best thing on pasta is more pasta. To be honest, I love most things on pasta. Not mushrooms, though. Unless they're mushrooms, that'll make you bigger in size. Mario, you grow it, guys. That kind of mushroom. Uh, no <laughs> yeah, I'm not a huge fan of mushrooms, either. Oh, I, I love... I was going to say, one of my favorite types of things to put into pasta is mushrooms. Like a mushroom Alfredo. I mean, it'd be best if it had... Seafood or something, or like sausage, sausage mushroom Alfredo. Ah. That's good. Yeah, mushroom. But yeah, I mean, I understand why. I understand wholeheartedly why people don't like mushrooms. What? What? Ah, oh. two fifths of a goal. <laughs> uh, Quiet. I am gaming is here. Said so two whole beeps. Careful. Too much oxygen can kill, too. <laughs> I, uh... One thing I... I don't really like on pasta... I don't really love... Chicken... In pasta. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, it's fine, but... I usually... If I, if I get it... It's, I think... It's most commonly in the form of, like, chicken fettuccine alfredo yeah because i think that's uh, that's a pretty common one i usually just eat all the chicken first and then eat <laughs> just with the fettuccine alfredo so get the chicken out of the way it's like they almost <laughs> should have just served you like a chicken breast on the side or something like that I, I think i'd like that more yeah i there's one dish at and i and i hate that my like frame of reference for pasta in this discussion is olive garden because i acknowledge that like it's probably not <laughs> the best Italian food that's out there, but they have a one where you get like a steak with like some fettuccine alfredo, and I'm fine with that conceptually. But it's like, I don't, I don't want to have like, you know, plated meat as like my primary dish at an Italian restaurant. I want it to be incorporated into the, into the pasta. And so I, I, I rarely ever order it because I'm like, well, I'd rather just, just be built in. I don't think I've ever actually had, like, steak Alfredo. I don't know if they make that. But it could be pretty okay. No, I'd try that, though. Uh, good morning to Groggy or Diet. It's great to see you. Thank you for being here. Tell your friends. Tell your mom. Copia Noodle is here. And that's exactly how I remember <laughs> Superphonic's theme song for the show going <laughs> Uh, I will be mostly lurking. Hopefully, uh, we'll be here properly tomorrow. Hey, just thank you for being here. And a uh, quick turnaround on the uh, sound effects request from yesterday. Ah, they're so good. I had to play them for my wife last night. She also enjoyed them. It's almost like you were there. Uh, I was going to say, no spoilers, but has anyone seen the Mario movie? And uh, mm -hmm. what are our initial reactions? Because uh, the things I've heard is critically... Maybe not acclaimed, but people are liking it because it's nostalgic and it's Mario, so. Yeah. Yeah, all the movie people hate it, all the video game people love it. That's kind of a split <laughs> that yeah. I'm seeing so far. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see it. Uh, I don't know how soon I'll get a chance to see it, but I am excited. It, it, it's just kind of cool to see that movie finally get made uh, 
and maybe put some of the references to like the what 1993 movie to bed. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, Copia says, potentially watching it Saturday, or I'll see Scream 6 again. How was Scream 6? I, like, have no interest in seeing it, uh, but, like, people who like the Scream franchise, I'm sure it's continuously nice to have, you know, extra movies. Kind of like probably those who love the Fast and the Furious, how you keep getting more and more right. of them. More movies. More faster. More furiouser. Let's see, we watched the 93 Mario movie last night, and I actually forgot just how wacky and actually very entertaining it was. And, and I will be fair, I... I Put it into like a category where it's like I just don't like that movie because I wanted it to be more like the game, like especially Bowser. I wanted Bowser to be well, King Koopa, to be like an image of what Bowser looks like in the game, and I don't feel like I got that from the '93 movie. So I think I fair I untreat uh, unfairly treat it sometimes. Yeah, it's a. Uh... It was just such a <laughs> weird choice. All the all the changes they made. <laughs> That's the wackiness part. <laughs> it's one of those movies that's just it's so bad it's almost fun. In its terribleness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my debit card just got here finally. Congratulations, Crock. <laughs> Does Grocky sometimes use our chat as a journal? <laughs> Dear GMS. <laughs> I, I just want to make, Grocky, I just want to make sure you know, and, and, and this is not a critique, I just want to feel like I have to tell you this, just to be safe. Everyone can see what you type. <laughs> this, this isn't like a chat GPT or something where all of a sudden, you know, you're just getting responses out of the, the void. I love Scream 6. I've rewatched it, uh, all the Screams twice since it was released. Okay, that's that's fine. All right. It's alright, I missed about three really good goal scoring chances. I was just like an inch off again, so. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure people have seen us play Rocket League badly before. <laughs> <laughs> Although I scored points. Yeah, like 60 of them. I only had 78 or, or you points. Had, you had 70, or teammate had 66. Oh, yeah, I guess it's kind of hard to score over 100 if I don't get an assist. So, Or right. a goal, but an assist would help. All right, well, never mind. There you go. Uh, you're off to a hot start if you want to play bingo today. Win $10 next Monday with exclamation point bingo. Type exclamation point bingo in chat right now and get this hour's bingo card. The word of the day is ad. Oh, ad. <laughs> Let's ask Eagle Eagle the math no. Eagle. Eagle's not even out. <laughs> you, you, you jump the queue. Man, he's struggling. I think we need to give Bob a vacation. Yeah, I think so. That's where we take him and move him to a box with like some palm trees on it. Yeah, and we'll, we'll have we'll have Copia do Bob's job for the day. Yeah. Copia, do you want to come live in Ryan's garage for a day? We'll make it worth your while. <laughs> uh, Groggy Dice says, "Dear GMS, I had a six hundred fifty dollar fraudulent charge on my debit card, and have went without access to my account for four days." Yeah. Now I want Groggy to be like Groggy Log, start eight four seven three two. <laughs> oh, uh, Kalef, what's the new number? Same security code. Yes, please put all sixteen digits in if you could, please. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Copia, thanks for the six hundred fifty dollars you owed me, though, Kalef. Well, 
I mean, they should have known before. Maybe it was Skynet. They went after cardificial intelligence. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you for being here. I'm Hefty Goof, that's Sports.Gaming. We're a little bit late. Our apologies. Let's get the news, video game headlines you need to know. Here's hashtag video game expert, Sean. Good morning. It is Thursday, April 6th, 2023, and this is your gaming morning show, morning gaming news. Um, lots of uh, little updates today um, for, for lots of things. Uh, first up is Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which is coming out later this month. And uh, as we do... Uh, as it gets closer, we start to get word of the file size of these new games, and sometimes they're rather large. And it turns out Star Wars Jedi Survivor has a colossal file size, at least on PC. This is from Ryan Densdale of IGN. Uh, they've revealed both the PC system requirements um, and its file size. Um, and it looks like it's going to be uh, 155 gigs for this game. So... Hopefully you, you got some space on your PCs. Otherwise, you'll have to delete some other games. Um, that puts it uh, five gigabytes over Red Dead Redemption 2, which was a giant game. Uh, so hopefully that means maybe this game is also large because uh, Jedi Fallen Order was pretty fantastic. So if we get more fantastic, but just with more size and fun things to explore, I'm, I'm pretty okay with that. Um, speaking of Jedi Fallen Order, that required about 55 gigabytes. So that's an extra 100 gigabytes of stuff. What's it going to be? Damn. That's a lot. I, I mean, I, I'm just thinking of like, you remember when, you know, a computer came standard with like a 250 gigabyte hard drive? Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not even talking like, that's not even like a back in my day, like back in my day. It came with, like, a 60-gig hard drive, right? But right. then when you started to get, like, these bigger, you know, more storage-heavy machines, you're like, oh, my gosh, I got a quarter of a terabyte in there. Wow. And now this file size is basically a quarter of a terabyte. <laughs> Dang. That's, that's, that's a bunch. Yeah, that's a bunch. So we'll, we'll see. Um, and I don't think they've released the file size for consoles yet. Um, I didn't snoop around enough to find that one way or the other. Um, so we'll keep an eye on this. And I'll be playing this game. Um, it comes out on the 28th. Uh, I really enjoyed the first one. So this one's on my list. I'm even trying to knock out some other uh, games that I was like halfway through. I've been trying to knock those out in preparation for this game coming out. Like Gotham Knights, I finished. Guardians of the Galaxy, I finished. So so I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Bring it on. All 155 gigabytes of it. And good thing, because I needed, I might need the, I might need the hard drive space. As I say, what Sean meant by uh, getting ready for this game is he's been deleting files. <laughs> uh, in our next piece of news this morning, a God of War Ragnarok update surprised us yesterday, and it adds new game plus and some other fun stuff. This is from Matt Miller of Game Informer. Um, the new game plus is the the big thing and it's something we knew was coming we weren't exactly sure when it would be coming but uh we knew it was on its way and now it's available as of yesterday um it features a new level cap enchantments and progression paths to improve your capabilities in your second playthrough you can also ex tackle an expanded version of the niflheim arena where you play as either either kratos or atreus and bring along a variety of companions to help you out. Um, there are also a bunch of other additions in, and improvements, including a black and white render mode for a more cinematic playthrough. Oh, that's pretty cool. A noble, uh, large blast of new content that ensures the dedicated fans will have good reason to jump back in if they desire. Uh, it includes new armors and stuff like that as well. So check that out. Available now if you have God of War Wreck. Do you, do you think, like, the timing? Like, is this long enough from release to you know, getting some bonus stuff out, or do you want more time to kind of reinvigorate the game? Is it too close to when it came out? No, I think this is a, a pretty good time. It came back, it came out back in November. Um, so this is a good good spacing for an up update like this. If your new game plus isn't going to be available at launch, which I, I still think that makes more sense to have that available at launch because there's a lot of people that finish the game and want to jump into a new game plus right away. Um, if it's not going to be available at launch, this timing's about right. I think that six-month mark is 
a good time for a large update that includes stuff like this that'll bring people back in. Um, and if you're not going to do DLC, then this is a good place for it. So we'll check that out. And uh, sooner or later, I'll finish that game and I'll get to have a new game plus. <laughs> We've been busy. It's clearing, it's clearing some hard drive space. Wait, no, that's <laughs> not the problem there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll finish it by next month. Yes. Um, in our last news story of the day, Blizzard has revealed its global release day and time for Diablo 4. This is from Adam Bankhurst of IGN. Uh, many, many people are very excited for Diablo 4 as Diablo games get the masses excited. I've never been a Diablo fan, but uh, some are, and now they know exactly when they'll be able to play it. Um, looks like uh, those who pre-ordered the Deluxe and Ultimate Editions will be the first to play on June 1st of this year. Um, uh, Mike Yabara, the president of Blizzard Entertainment, has clarified all of these release days and times. Um, so Thursday the 1st at 4 p.m. Uh, I believe these are all Pacific time. Um, uh, those who pre-ordered will be able to play it. Um, and uh, uh, he just threw a bunch of dates and times in here. It's the second at 12 a.m. in Europe, the second at 8 a.m. in Asia. I like how he just says the date and time and then a continent as if there's only one time zone in each continent. Um, and then the regular launch is the 5th of June at 4 p.m. Um, in the U.S. Boop, boop, boop. I just, I remember seeing a headline just randomly on my phone. It was like, Diablo is going to find a way to keep people playing it for tens of thousands of hours. And I was like, oh, this must be like a, like a kind of it hooks you, sucks you in kind of game. Yeah, it, it does seem that way. But, uh, hasn't gotten me yet. Not yet. Not right. Valorant first, then. Boss. Well, I think Valorant's dead. No, it's all Counter-Strike 2. That's right. Just play it. Just play it. You know you want to. <laughs> Uh, I do want to. <laughs> no, always last but never least, we finish off today's gaming morning show, morning gaming news with the world renowned segment within a segment where we take a look at what is out today. Is that Pacific time? Watch. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> today in Asia, all of Asia, one time zone. Um, Across the Valley is out on PlayStation 5 and PC. Curse of the Sea Rats <laughs> out on PlayStation 4, <laughs> Xbox One, and Switch and PC. Uh, are the sea rats related to the space rats? Probably. <laughs> uh, Everspace 2 is out on PC. Hyperviolent is out on PC. Marfusha is out on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X slash S, and Switch. Oxygen is out on PC. Beep. Beep. Uh, Paparazzi is out on Switch. Raven Swatch is out on PC. And for the most prestigious award in video game focused morning shows, your favorite segment within a segment within a segment. Today's name of the morning goes to Buddy Simulator 1984. So you want to be a buddy <laughs> out on the PlayStations and the Xboxes. See, here's where my the like hair on the back of my neck stands up because my buddy was that doll that looked like Chucky. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if... I mean, listen, the, the cover art for this was kind of already spooky. I had a hard time, like, going after it, so... I don't know. It's ter a little terrifying. A little terrifying. Yeah. And in a sneak preview, name of the morning, name of the month for April will be Buddy Simulator 1984. We'll play, be playing it all through the month of May. Disqualified. <laughs> I'm, I'm d disappointed Curse of the Sea Rats didn't make it, but also Paparazzi. That's got to be a game about puppies taking pictures of puppy celebrities. <laughs> there's some pretty good ones. Space Rats. Yeah, there's the Space Rats. <laughs> Watch out for them. Uh, you can't pump too much oxygen into uh, Bob's box. We're, we might be at critical levels now. I, should I check on him? Yeah, is he getting loopy? I'm pretty okay in here. Uh, that seems fine. Please help me. Uh-oh. Did you send more oxygen in there? Maybe. I'm, maybe I'm maybe, maybe the beep is like, uh, you know, like if someone's masked and you're, and you're squeezing the bag. Maybe the beep is just like a squirt of oxygen. Oh, Okay. And so I got to keep it going all day long. <laughs> Probably really should have thought of a better system to get oxygen to Bob's box. Uh, 
smelling through the box hole. All right, congratulations to our name of the morning, Buddy Simulator 1984. It is now a contender for name of the month. We named our name of the month for the month of March, and that was not for broadcast. And we're planning to play that in the final hour crew. So if you want to see what that game looks like, stick around for the eight o'clock hour, and we will play that with you on this edition of Gaming Morning Show. Uh, good morning, a nice chat to Papa Paws. Awkwardish Panda and Scott Chick all rolling in during the news. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here today. Nice chat. Uh, Papa Paz says, "Yeah, those were all Pacific times." The D4 baby releases 4 p.m. Pacific on June 1st, and also uh, had mentioned that heard the game is even better. Uh, talking about Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So yeah, it sounds like more gigs e equals more awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm ready. There's been a preview event, so we're starting to get a lot of people's early. Uh, thoughts on the game the one thing they added that'll be pretty fun to play with is a full uh customization option for the aesthetics of your main character and uh your little buddy robot mm -hmm. um so that'll be fun to have some control over what they look like uh shout out to uh, but why though uh, kate sanchez who's been a guest of the show before got a lot of uh, inside access to uh, jedi survivor star wars jedi survivor so if you want to read a lot of what kate posted uh, go to that website there. Kopi says, I hope there's breaks between the gigs. Doing a run that long would be exhausting for any Jedi. It's a lot of gigs in a row. Beedy boop, beedy boop. Uh, it's great to see you. Thank you for being here. Let's say hi to Eagle Eagle, the Mathematic Eagle, and Bear Bear. They are our friends who live behind Sean's house. Now we open up the curtain and let them be in the house. Figuratively, though, because they're just looking through the window. They're not actually inside. Bear Bear, Eagle Eagle the Mathmat Eagle. Hi. <laughs> Did any of that rhyme? Yeah. Yeah. He took some 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 liberties, yeah, but did. they were close. <clears throat> took some liberty, liberty, liberties. <laughs> liberties. <laughs> some artistic license. If you are playing exclamation point bingo, uh, that poem didn't rhyme, so you can check off that square if it's on your bingo card this morning. <laughs> Uh, we will get back to the uh, star date slash journal slash saga that is groggy or die in just a little bit as well. Papa Paz says the preview event was insane. Collector's edition is already sold out. Nice. Uh, let's get the uh, headlines we're tracking. You can news if you wanna. Outside the video game realm, and that is our at this hour segment. We're telling you stories of uh, well-traveled porcupines this morning. It's from Ben Hooper of UPI, and keep in mind that the. Uh, at this hour? That's not what they call it. That's what we call it. The um, Odd News Minute, that's what it's called, is available now from Ben Hooper and uh, the UPI crew. It started on Monday, and you can check it out right now wherever podcasts are available to you. Uh, this well-traveled porcupine relocated from a hotel parking lot in Iowa, reads the headline uh, at this hour. Sounds like wildlife officials in Iowa responded to a hotel parking lot to relocate an unusual non-native animal, a porcupine. The Department of Natural Resources said in a Facebook post that personnel responded to said parking lot uh, was at a hotel on a report of a wandering por porcupine. This porcupine just, just hanging out out here. Don't know what's going on. It's weird. Find your home. The department said porcupines are not native to Iowa, but they have occasionally wandered in from neighboring states. The post said the porcupine was re relocated, quote, to a more suitable wildlife area outside of town. Did they murder the porcupine? It sure sounds like they mor murdered, murdered the porcupine. Mordored the porcupine. <laughs> uh, department of Natural Resources researchers collected some quills and fecal samples from the porcupine to conduct DNA tests and try to determine where the animal originated. Even though it won't be coming back anytime soon. Probably a mother porcupine. That would probably be a very good guess, yes. Please don't go after its porcupine family. It did nothing to you, DNR. Also, every time I see DNR in text, I just think of... That bonsai tree clearly says, do not resuscitate. Because I'm all medically like that. It's, it's true. You're, yeah. you're the medical expert. Oh, yeah. Anytime you need something medically, you let me know. <laughs> that ball, like, landed between everybody. Yep. 
<laughs> yeah, I, uh, I kind of went up. I saw the, the, the opponents were coming, so I tried to go up and kind of block where they were going to hit. And <laughs> they didn't hit it. So I was just jumping up in the air for no reason. Not to... Not to make you worried, but we have an idle teammate, and you have me, so just just be, be aware that you're basically playing by yourself right now. Rhyming... Nice block. <laughs> I was reading chat, too. I wasn't even looking. No, it was perfect. You, you spawned right in front of the ball. It was great. Uh, Groggy's been uh, journaling. Uh, we, we learned this morning so far that Groggy or Die doesn't realize that our chat is actually not uh, his personal journal and that it goes to everybody here, uh, just so you know. So if you see anything kind of odd, that that's the reason why. Apparently Groggy uh, had some fraud on his bank account, just recently got access back to it, was entering a journal entry about how that's the case. That finally timed out. For once, me lunging at the net actually worked. And I tried to get in the way of our the goalie, and I missed. But hopefully, I was distracting. <sighs> so it started out, dear GMS. I had a six hundred fifty dollar fraudulent <laughs> charge on my debit card that went through my account, and I had no access for four days. Coincidentally, Kalaf and Copia talked about a six hundred fifty dollar payment that had been outstanding from Copia to Kalaf, and that has now been. Uh, Situated, or rather vice versa, it was for Copia from Kalaf. Uh, so now waiting for a hopeful chargeback credit, says Groggy or Die. And then says, Groggy Log, start date Thursday, April 6th. I suspect Copia <laughs> and Kalaf commit fraud together. We'll be conducting a thorough investigation. I, I'm sure you have nothing to worry about. Uh, Groggy Log continued, Kalaf is not to be trusted in investigation conflict of interest. Wait, were you hiring Kalaf to help you with the investigation? <laughs> I mean, I, I know I'm a medical expert, but there's nothing I could do there. Don't do that. <laughs> Watch out. Watch out. Uh, preview event was insane. Mentioned that from Papa Paws. Awkwardish Panda said, Oof! A mood for all my bonsais that have died at this point. We were sold some in really bad shape. Yeah, it happens. Ah. Yeah, Sean, uh, gosh, was that two years ago that you tried to get a bonsai tree to live? Yeah, and he was doing so good. And then we had a freak ice storm in February of uh, 21. Yeah. And it mordored it. Mordored. Murdered it, it, everything on the deck. It, it was sent to the big porcupine shelter oh. in the sky. Uh, KLF says baby porcupines are called porcupets. A group of porcupines is called a prickle. That is not true. Is that true? <laughs> it better be true. Oh my gosh. Porcupets? Wow. I like that a lot. And a prickle? Oh. Uh, Down says, oh dear, Groggy, now where did this happen? Because Groggy says, I'm an open book. <laughs> Kalaf offered to be the investigator. Again, that seems like a bad formula, just so you know. <laughs> I mean, I know we pay Kalaf an insane amount of zeros, but... Even with that, I don't think I would trust Kalaf to be your investigator. We only have him research and develop. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Chick melted a little bit with porcu pets and a prickle. Nice try. Oh, man, tried so I've been hard. an inch away for these goals every time. Uh, Scott Chick said, did Sean's bonsai tree also have a hat? No, that was before we got the cute little plant hats. Plant hats. Yeah. Uh, for those who have never gone to our Discord and seen, Sean just posted a recent video or a recent picture of another plant and a hat which is
kind of a Discord exclusive, I suppose. Um, <laughs> did you also recently get eyes for your plants? Yeah, that was a, uh, a birthday or Christmas present for uh, my wife. Um, and so now every time, every time the the plants get baths and watered, um, we have to take all the eyes off. And so I matched up a hat and a pair of eyes for <laughs> a particular plant. Are you a stylist for plants? A little bit. All right, thirty seconds, and we're gonna get to birthdays this day in gaming history. That's coming up. Yeah, I thought for some reason you were photoshopping eyes onto a plant for some reason. Nope. <laughs> nope, those are magnetic eyes. Oh, so you don't eyes, even, you don't even stab the plant. No, no, it's plant friendly. It's like you're, you're mortaring your plants, but apparently that's not. Nope. No, they like it. Mm. Uh, apparently Groggy said that this is happening on a different planet. That's why it's a star date. Pluto! The best damn planet in the world. I think Bob is still the biggest Pluto stan. Yeah, for sure. Find yourself somebody who... That's the second straight time that there's been a yep. goal at the very end. Yep. Hey, at least we scored, we scored a goal this time. It was 5-1 to one instead of 5-0. to zero. Find yourself someone who uh, looks at uh, the, the planets the way that Bob looks at Pluto. That's that's not what I meant to say, but just <laughs> let's go with it. Yeah. yeah, just go with it. All right, well, we're losers for the second straight time. I did score over 100 points that time, so at least we tried. At least we tried. The, the goal helped. The goal helped. All right, uh, let's get into your answers to our question of the day, and we're going to do birthdays as well. Uh, what's your favorite thing that goes on pasta? Answer from Scott Chick said cheese. So much cheese is what goes best on pasta. That's true. Cheese is yummy. Lots of cheese. Um, um, uh, apparently, uh, pasta a la Ryan is the way to go. <laughs> Butter and Parmesan. <laughs> well, I don't know if I will not call it pasta a la Ryan for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah it's a good name. I mean, I'll give you the option of changing the name to Pasta a la Hefty. Ooh, that does if have a pretty like good that. ring to it. If you like that more. Hearty or Hefty? Uh, it is 6.51 West Coast time. It's 9.51 out east, and it is 2.51 for those watching GMS in the afternoon. Did you pop a spring? Well, we played that on the high east ring. <laughs> it's like a... A spring out of your microphone just bouncing around. <laughs> Why are there so many springs in there? <laughs> Microphones don't have springs. Uh, good morning and nice chat to you, uh, Jack. It's good to see you. Thank you for stopping by. Nice chat! I am lurking and my favorite planet is a tiger lily. Not Pluto. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> if anyone understands what you just said, it's definitely Bob. Bob likes it! <laughs> Get it? Planet... Does your favorite planet wear a cowboy hat and googly eyes? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, all right. It's great to see you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the sweet goal, brah, from Quiet Aim Gaming. Uh, yeah. Now, we also have a, over here, it's a DNACPR, by the way, says Scott Chick. Oh. Instead of DNR? Yeah. So do not allow for CPR. <laughs> Did I get that right? <laughs> Do not aid with CPR. Huh. Yeah. Uh, who is it that likes spaghetti with vinegar? Kiki, I think. Vinegar on spaghetti, huh? Uh, no, I don't think I like that. I've never I would try it because I haven't tried it, but yeah. deep down, I feel like I'm not going to like it. Conceptually, I'm not getting it yet, but yeah. Uh, Awkwardish Panda, I actually really like a good carbonara, but the best pasta I've ever had is fettuccine with lobster from Biagi's? Bia yeah, Biagi's? Mm -hmm. It's lobster cream sauce. It's amazing. I do love a good seafood Alfredo. Yeah. Yeah, I can get I can get down with that. Yeah. 
Well, if you've answered the topic of the day, uh, that might be on your bingo card. Do exclamation point bingo right now and get in before the end of the hour. It's time for birthdays this day in gaming history. If you have a birthday to celebrate, please let us know because we would like to celebrate with you. Birthday time. All right. Uh, let's do celebrity birthdays first. I don't have any audience birthdays to uh, let you know about that were on our calendar. But again, you can let us know, chat. Uh, today, actor Billy D. Williams is six. Nope. Actor Billy D. Williams is 86. 86 today. A uh, fantastic fun fact to start the day. Uh, his middle name is not D, D E E, as it's spelled out. D is short for December. That's... His middle name is December. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Also, his, his full legal name is William December Williams. William December Williams? Yeah. Junior. The third. Wow. That is a fun fact. That is a good start. Cleveland.com. I'm sure it won't go down from here. Nope. Never has. Never, Never has. Uh, today... Actor John Ratzenberger turned 76. He recently appeared in an episode of the Peacock show, Poker Face. Are you starting to think that the person who puts this together has been watching Poker Face recently? Yeah, I do. I definitely do. <laughs> but you should watch Poker Face. After Ted Lasso and Severance and Succession. When, whenever you get around Brooklyn to it. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Whenever you get around. I'm happy they didn't do John Ratzenberger has had a vocal role in every single Pixar movie, though. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think everyone knows that, in fact, at this point. Now, today, actress Mary Lou Henner turns 71. Uh, her su son, Nick Lieberman, is a director. I like the spelling of Mary Lou. M-A-R-I-L-U. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And I hope it is Mary Lou. It'd be very shame now if it was like, Hefty, that's Mara Lou. Mara Lou. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's Mary Lou. I think so, too. All right. Uh, we dip below 70 to tell you that actor Michael Rooker turned 68 today. Uh, he's set to appear in the upcoming Fast X. That's good, because he once appeared at a premiere for F9, Fast and Furious 9. Yeah, I, I remember that. That was back in... Uh... June of 2021. Yeah. Yeah, I think they, they debuted that one at the uh, TCL Chinese Theater. Yeah. yeah. It was a lovely day. Uh, shot by Jordan Strauss. Oh, yeah. Jordan Strauss was definitely the, the photographer. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He does great work. Hat weather, though, on that Friday. Yeah, I mean, you know, what they say about uh, Fridays in June in L.A., Hat weather. Hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all say that. Uh, today, actor Paul Rudd is 54. Of all the cool things Paul Rudd has done, and all the fun facts you could probably find out about Paul Rudd, his middle name is Stephen. Paul Stephen Rudd. Assuming that is his real name, as we just learned. All right. Paul Rudd's still hanging on. Like, crushing it. He was he was doing a thing for Ant Man, Quantronium or whatever. Quantromania. Yeah. Quantomania. My favorite ride at the fair. Quantromania. If you look at uh, if you look at uh, Ant Man and the Wasp and then Quantomania, if you look at Quantomania, the words Ant and Man are in that, and they used that for the title sequence. It was brilliant. They know what they're doing. They really do. They really, really do. Uh, actor Zach Braff is 48 today. Mm -hmm. uh, he voiced an alien in the Obi-Wan Kenobi miniseries. A lot of Star Wars today. A lot of Star Wars today. We had that and the whole Jedi Survivor thing. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, Candace Cameron Brace, 47 today. Uh, Candace once guest starred on an episode of Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. That was a pretty banger theme song. 
That was fantastic. Uh, the whole for, show was great. For the eighth straight day, we don't have any drummer birthdays. Boo. Somebody, Boo. somebody please find drummers born in late March, early April, especially. Uh, can tell you, though, singer-guitarist Black Francis of the Pixies is 58 today. And bassist Mark Koo, Lapololinen, that's an, I wasn't far off there, Hubasank, is 50. Nice work. Lapololinen. Something like that. I was gonna, I was gonna celebrate uh, a person's birthday because I thought they were in the band The Wander Years. <laughs> But no, it's actor Jason Hervey who is in the Wonder Years TV show. <laughs> He's 51. That's why things are so confusing sometimes. Uh, Zach Braff was in a show called Scrubs. So was actor Eliza Coop, who was also in Happy Endings, is 42 today. Yeah, but I think she was in the, the very end of Scrubs when it got bad. Get wrecked, <laughs> Eliza Coop. It wasn't Eliza's fault. It wasn't Eliza's fault. <laughs> it's not you, it's... <laughs> All right, uh, I'm uh, I'm J satisfied. Do you have any? James Watson, uh, the co-discoverer of DNA, is 95. The Dino DNA. <laughs> uh, his partner Crick also helped discover. Crick Watson, Watson and Crick. I believe it was Crick and Watson. Thank you. <laughs> it's alphabetical order. <laughs> Oh, Crick was spelled with the Z, I forgot. It's <laughs> Crick. It's a Crick. It's a Crick. Uh, I am Jeff Down says uh, William December Williams is a Star Wars thing too. Yeah, absolutely. We had a whole bunch of whole bunch of Star Wars today. Yeah. Uh, good morning and nice chat to Drew Mega says everyone and their mother looks to be in Fast X. It's true. I mean, they, they've slowly amassed so many stars uh, to be in that franchise by the 10th one you got lots of them i think uh, bob you were in fast x right yes okay. and if I, you look I, in the background of one of the scenes there's a cardboard box and if i remember oh. right austin's mom was in there wait austin your mom is here no in fast x not here are we fast x have we been filming fast x this whole time Funk. Now I, I think Bob's loose. Pump some more oxygen in that box, please. Beep, beep. Could someone beep. crack the window, please? That would be the opposite of what we need, Bob. Well, maybe not. I guess it's just letting the concentrated oxygen that we're spending money pumping in out. Bob just doesn't get it. I'll, I'll check on him during the. It'll be okay. Oops, I did it again. All right, this day in gaming history, uh, we have one from before 1995. Sean gets a chance, a chat, to play lawsuit or not a lawsuit. This is where Sean guesses, is this moment in gaming history a lawsuit or not a lawsuit? Because there were plenty of them from early on. Sean, the year was 1982. I'm going to say, not a lawsuit and not Star Wars. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Bob plays a didgeridoo. Your answer's locked in. You said not a lawsuit, 1982. Atari. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Atari was involved in quite a few lawsuits. Yeah. Atari releases the Pac-Man video game for the Atari VCS system. It was $37, and you are correct. Not a lawsuit. Also not Star Wars. Correct. Correct. <laughs> nice. Uh, 2001, Warner Brothers releases the animated film Pokemon, the movie, three, to theaters in the U.S. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There were a lot of Pokemon movies, but there were there were two prior to that in like the 90s, probably. Yeah. Wow. I can yeah, tell. It was a whole. It was a whole thing. I, I'm sure it was. I think this like cements the fact that I could I could not have been less of a Pokemon fan because I would have noticed those movies yeah. coming out. They really missed us by, like, just, like, a, a few years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 2004, Acclaim releases the Alias video game. That was for PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Nice. Alias. Didn't play. I, I watched Alias. Wasn't that a show? That was a show. Wasn't that a Jennifer Garner show? 
It was. Yeah. It was. Wasn't it was on spy. TV? It was on TV. Yeah. Didn't it have like commercials in between its segments? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Had end credits at the end of the show. Nice. And an intro yeah. sequence. Uh huh. Wow. I know everything about TV. <laughs> Organized into seasons. <laughs> How convenient. Cracked. <laughs> Uh, and in 2012, Nintendo put out Xenoblade Chronicles for the Nintendo Wii. Oh, good. Just the Wii. Just the Wii. Yeah. yeah you don't have to worry. Scared. Yeah, we, we wouldn't do that to you. We don't talk about Wii U. Uh, Awkward Panda says 1982 Tylenol became the first to really push for tamper proof packaging. Nice. Was that <laughs> is that correlated to <laughs> Pac Man coming out? Probably. I've been playing so much Pac-Man that I need to take some Tylenol. <laughs> this isn't Tylenol. <laughs> you know what's going to happen to me, though, because Panda mentioned that? I'm going to remember 1982 and Tylenol. No, I'm not going to lie. It's going to happen. <laughs> Panda says, you said 1982 lawsuits. Welcome to my ADHD. Okay. I totally understand now. <laughs> the year was 1982. 1982. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm not joking, Panda. You're going to help me win some sort of contest down the road, and I am grateful to you for that. <laughs> uh, we'll get to Drew Mega's comment about what goes best on pasta. In fact, we have one from uh, Drew Mega, one from Jack to get to. What are your answers for it? Please let us know. Next hour, we'll give you a list of the day, and that list is pertaining to the worst food crimes you can commit according to Italians. Wow. it's a hefty list. Hearty or hefty? It's not surprising, I think, of the ones we're going to read. Nine of the ten are about pasta. So it was funny. And, of course, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll pasta a la hefty be a crime. <laughs> uh, also next hour, sports! Sports! Sean and Hefty Goof, thank you for being here. Gaming Morning Show, back in a moment on Facebook Gaming, Twitch, YouTube, GamingMorningShow.tv. <laughs> I actually have to talk to her because I was at Disney World and there's a, or I was at Animal Kingdom and they have uh, a ride called Dinosaur where you're sitting in this like room and like it's really crazy and scary. Um, but when I left, they had a T-shirt that said, "If you're happy and you know what, clap your O." And it was a picture of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but they only had it in size small, and I'm 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 a I'm a big boy, um, and also it was thirty five dollars. So, KZ, we should talk about making a sweet t-shirt, and I'll oh. give you money. What? I heard the word O. Yeah, I, I did too. If Look, you're happy, oh, I get it. If you're happy, you know what? Oh. Oh. Because uh, there's a T-Rex, so we can't clap, because... <laughs> you know? Thank you for demonstrating that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's also National Bookmobile Day, National Tartan Day, National Teflon Day, National Walking Day, and National, we did this yesterday too, Asai, Akai, 
<laughs> that's Acai. why I thought it was awesome. Acai bowl. I was like, this is a day of the day. Like, this is so great. <laughs> so that's a, a day of the day today, too. So, you day know, honestly, the thing that has made me the most bummed regarding acai or whatever is Costco acai? a couple of years ago switched from having chocolate frozen yogurt, like in their little ice cream machine, to switching to a acai. I don't even know what it's called. Sherbet? 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 <laughs> Why are they all showing up today? <laughs> this is our entire top 10 list from yesterday manifesting itself in today's show. <laughs> played it a couple times in the first two or three days that I worked there. Never played it again. Except for when, when my I, daughter when I, came to visit. Other than that. No, you, your thing. When I when I worked at camp, we had a ping pong table in our break room, and that got used a lot, mm. like a lot. Mike, job number four. But I think that's because people just didn't want to hang out with the kids anymore, so they're like, "Yeah, ping pong works." Yeah. Ping pong works. Ping pong's not gonna throw up on me. It's fine. It does sometimes. <laughs> does it? Yeah, we don't talk about that. Though. Do you have a Haunted dog ping named pong table? Ping pong. <laughs> we don't talk about ping pong. I thought that table was used for beer pong. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you could use a, a paddle with this thing? What? <laughs> <laughs> the post net walls, those were doubles. If you hit the back fence, that was a triple. And then if you could get it over the top, that was home run. And we just played hmm. baseball on a tennis court. It was a blast. That sounds fun. I'd do that again in a heartbeat. GMS yeah, yeah. tennis it's, baseball. It's I don't understand though. Like, you need to get a lot of pickles though, right? Because like I mean, you hit them with the racket and they like explode. Like, how do you how do you like? Is there a is there like a bulk store to get pickles for cheap or what? <laughs> you use spears. <laughs> but then that, like, what if you get hit with it then? Then you're in trouble. Like, ow! You know, you get, like, shanked with the spear. You're all set. This just whole, like, it just doesn't make any sense. No more. No wonder people are so mad that they're pulling up the tennis courts because they get pickles everywhere. It's ridiculous. Good. A pistachio pie, peanut pie. There's a peanut pie? No, there's, there's not. I guess there could be a peanut butter pie. I need that. Doesn't your mom make a peanut butter pie? No, my mom's dead. My mom makes a butterscotch pie. Butterscotch pie. Out of peanuts? That's weird. <laughs> Why don't you just call it a peanut pie then? Because it's, butter it's butterscotch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, gotcha. Yeah, I, I was with Ravi. You lost me there. Cherry or never... I, yeah, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're calling the pits, are those nuts? Sure, yeah. Okay. <laughs> At this point, I'll just accept Cherry the answer. Cherry pit pie. Mm. <laughs> crunch, 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 crunch. <laughs> uh, Culty goes, I'm obsessed with spicy bread and butter pickles. Can't get enough. Everything was fine and suddenly it leave. I was left behind, broken in pieces. Then you'd reappear. Sometimes we all feel a little afraid. We don't put our emotions on display. Coming up on Gaming Morning Show, list of the day and sports. Take Gaming Morning Show with you on Twitter Spaces. Find us at Watch GMS on Twitter and listen while scrolling your feed. Or try audio only on Twitch. Win $10 next Monday with exclamation point bingo. Type exclamation point bingo in chat right now and get this hour's bingo card. It's all coming up on Gaming Morning Show. Time for hour number two, right now. Mm morning, gamer. Welcome in Gaming Morning Show. Thank you for being here. Hefty Goof, Sports.Gaming, and Bob. Bear Bear, Eagle Eagle, the Mathmat Eagle, and Bob. 
all of the wild animals. Bob likes it. Bob is uh, off the charts this morning. He really is. We'll have to check him out and make sure everything's good in the box. Oops, I did it again. When, when he sings that, does he mean had an accident? <laughs> you know, I didn't think so. But again, the way that Bob's <laughs> operating this morning, I wouldn't be surprised. So yeah, is this, is this another put it on a pancake thing? That oh we're my discovering? god! <laughs> so on Tuesday's show, we were playing two, uh, Teammate Tuesday, by the way, and uh, it was It Takes Two, which is a game that we're really enjoying playing through. That game, uh, like I, that game doesn't deserve. No, I don't deserve that game because I'm such a bad video games player. Like as in, I don't play them enough. I don't really have like. A lot of perspective with them and so like that game is like almost too well done for me to play like I'm I don't do it justice but the little things that they do especially this latest moment we're in like a winter wonderland almost I guess is a good way to describe it mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. just so like peaceful and calm and I don't know it because like you needed a break yeah at this point yeah. yep for sure yeah after murdering the elephant uh it needed a some something needed in terms of the pacing and this was a perfect time for it and it seems like uh our characters are getting closer they're getting along better they're reminiscing about their early relationship it's changed a lot and that's good too because sean and i uh we've been having some some tough times between us and mm -hmm. so it's it's mm -hmm. nice that as brothers-in-law we can start getting closer together again it, it's true I've got another confession to make. Uh, we have a cat. Uh, that is Arturo. Meow. If you have Arturo on your second hour bingo card, then you are in business. You can X out Arturo's face. Wait. No, don't murder Arturo. Did you just say something about murder in a very uplifting voice? <laughs> I said, don't do that. He's so cute. 877 cash meow. <laughs> 877 cash meow. We did tell you a story uh, at this hour, last hour, about a porcupine that was probably murdered by Iowa authorities. Uh, that's not confirmed. It's just a probably. <laughs> <laughs> this hour, we'll tell you about the piranha-like fish that was caught in a lake in South Carolina. So, oof. A lot of dangerous animals. <laughs> that's not where it's supposed to be. So that's coming up. It is National Library Day, National Caramel Popcorn Day, National Employee Benefits Day, National Food Faces Day. <laughs> National Gang Day, National J Day, National Pajama Day, National Parker Day, National Robert Day? It's National Robert Day for you, Bob! Bob is good with it. National oh. Sorry Charlie Day, National Taylor Day, uh, not as in like a, a clothing creator, but like, you know, the name. Like the Taylor. name. Yeah. Uh, National Teflon Day and World Table Tennis Day. <laughs> Uh, There's you... a lot of name days today. Yeah, I agree. April 6th, apparently very hefty on the uh, names. It's also a uh, national... Uh, I guess there weren't any uh, other... Oh, yeah, Army days. They're not Amy days. So, yeah, it was Parker, Robert, Jay, and Taylor today. Sorry, Charlie, I don't think has anything to do with an actual, like, Charlie thing. No, I don't think so. So. Uh, or maybe, <laughs> maybe this... Maybe there's a comma. Maybe it's... National, sorry, Charlie Day. <laughs> Everyone who knows a Charlie, today's the day to apologize. You have to say sorry. Uh, we're asking you about uh, sauce. Today is Carbonara Day. Good morning and nice chat to, hey, it's Brendan. Great to see you. Nice chat. Uh, a couple of answers from the last hour that we still wanted to convey, which, by the way, uh, Kalaf crushing it with baby porcupines are called porcupets, and a group of porcupines is called a prickle. Which is just, aww. It's super cool. Uh, but Kalaf, no, rather, uh, Drew Mega said, Freshly grated Parmigiano Re Reggiano is a must for me on pasta dishes. RHS Jack said, My favorite pasta is the Renaissance, but I'm partial to the beat era of the 60s. Let's ask Eagle Eagle the Mathmateagle. He he said, Squawk! Thank you. 
Thank you for trans. <laughs> okay, laugh. What did Jack tell us? <laughs> I'm very confused. Uh, we're getting some great 1982 facts uh, from Awkwardish Panda, who's a former uh, guest of the show. E on fulfillment. We still have not posted Panda's appearance, which we have it in the YouTube hopper, but we haven't actually put it on YouTube. But during that conversation, we talked about uh, a project that uh, pa Panda's doing, which uh, is set in 1982. So we got a whole bunch of bonus 1982 facts uh, that mm -hmm. I didn't expect to get today. And this is great. 1982, cost of a 32nd Super Bowl ad was $324,000. Now a Super Bowl ad costs, like, what, $15 million or something like that? Yeah. So, there you go. Uh, also, cost of a single gigabyte of data storage was 270000 And then, I'm so happy that KLAF did this, because I had the same exact thought. Well, how much would it cost to be able to download... Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and it's around forty-two million dollars. <laughs> it's a lot of money. It is. <laughs> Storage and the price of it over the decades is so absurd. <laughs> I mean, I have two hundred. I think I have two hundred fifty some gigs in my iPhone. Yeah. Isn't that nuts? It's it's crazy. And I feel like, and even even on smaller scales, like the price the price of like a terabyte external hard drive, and how much that's changed over the last five years. Yeah, you know, like the, the price of storage just is so so crazy to look at over time. When I was in school, I had to do a lot of video editing, and so I ended up buying an eighty gigabyte uh, 80, eighty gigabyte external hard drive for projects and I ended up buying a friend of mine one too just because we were editing together and I felt like I got a really good deal but that was 80 gigs that I needed an external hard drive and then like 10 years later you could go to the store and buy like a 500 gigabyte small itty bitty external hard drive for like a tenth of the cost it felt like yeah the, the timeline on storage I feel like it was really fast. Yeah. Ah. Because now you get like a terabyte, or not terabyte probably, but like a 500 gigabyte SD card for $12. It's not true, but <laughs> it feels like that. <laughs> it takes two. That game is not how to parent 101 are you sure are you sure i'm not supposed to murder my kid's favorite stuffed animal <laughs> it just depends on if you want to make them cry or not yeah <laughs> i'm still kind of worried that the elephant's gonna come back as the final boss and we have to defeat the elephant again yeah I don't want to do that, Sean. If, if that elephant needs to be murdered again by us, I think we just turn it off. In a surprise twist, the final battle, uh, you do have to fight the elephant, but you get to play as Moon Baboon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it quite said it was a visual palate cleanse, if you will, and it was much needed. Oh. That game has been very fun to play, though. Yeah, they've done a, a great job. I'm excited to see uh, what comes next from that developer. Yeah. Well, especially because we had so much fun playing A, a Way Out. Uh-huh. And I still argue that has one of the best, like, twists in any media history, let alone video games. So, yeah. If you were looking for a fun game, play A Way Out. Man, they're just always there. It's a great expression of how much tech has advanced for us older millennials. Yes, the elder millennials. We were there as the millennial text was written. <laughs> Ugh, 
Nice. Gotcha. I almost screwed it up, too. <sighs> Let us have the ball in front of the net, please. <laughs> I mean, I'm grateful that I have lived through the dial-up era and the expensive storage era and, you know, pre-cloud. Like, I'm, I'm happy I have because I appreciate, I think, everything a little bit more because of all of that. Right. We've seen how it could be. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we got list of the day. Ten of the worst food crimes you could possibly commit according to Italians. That's coming up. Yes, teammate. Ah, oh, thought they had it. Nice teammate. Ah, oh. yes, teammate. I'm just driving in circles. Oh my god! It was finally in front of the net, and I couldn't get there. I I literally think we put it in front of the net maybe three <sighs> times in that whole game. This game's stupid. It's adjusted for us. <laughs> I had 22 points. <laughs> I think that, I think there's a miscalculation. Uh, Twenty-two points, man. I'm the problem. Uh, it's me. <laughs> man, they played good defense. I hope their next game combines the gameplay of It Takes Two and the story of A Way Out. This is quite I'm gaming. Awkwardish Panda says, "Like, can you imagine handling handing out?" Can you imagine handing out? Can you imagine handing one of out little five-year-old <laughs> asses a smartphone in 1987 rather than a Nintendo? No, I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. Gosh, a smartphone in our hand, man. We would have been cracked. <laughs> now, Groggy says, how long, "How long do you think it'd take us to figure out that you can touch the screen and do things?" What this? You'd be like this phone doesn't do anything. This is magic. What is going on? <laughs> uh, make the sequel. It takes four and offer the double split screen like in the old days. Oh, we could go two by two. <gasps> you could have it be you, you know, May and Cody, uh -huh. the daughter and the elephant. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's in the future, and it's May and Cody and the daughter and her serious boyfriend, who hasn't been they haven't had a very good relationship lately now we need to help them fix their relationship but they murder the book of love and the elephants there for some reason <laughs> good morning to keith anthony nice chat uh, we're asking you about pasta today it's world uh carbonara day so we're asking you uh if you would please let us know what you like best on pasta uh chris panda says learn to read my type of these i usually can i that was an e me i was struggling with that one <laughs> Uh, Down says, Twist, you say. You clearly haven't seen the Fast and the Furious series. When not only does Letty wind up not being dead, neither does Han and Vince. I think... I think Spoiler tease! I think Fast and Furious at this point is basically cinema soap opera. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Someone you thought was dead just turned out they were in a coma for a while. Someone who was written off comes back. Uh, Town said May's serious boyfriend. No, May and Cody get they're fine. <laughs> Maybe they go into like a thruple kind of situation, and so it is May, Cody, and then they're like other person that makes their relationship stay spicy. <laughs> uh, good morning, nice chat to I Good Apollo. It's good to see you this morning. Thank you for being here. Nice chat. Pasta, you say the only right answer is an egregious amount of Parmesan cheese, enough to make it a borderline crime I mean you know you go to Olive Garden and they're like say when <laughs> just never say anything. Keep it coming. my hands you are gonna start a fire you might want to go get another block of cheese with him just It's not good. 
Uh, Graggy says, I'm going to Italy for 11 days and I will commit all these crimes. Well, let's see. These are the crimes that you shouldn't commit when it comes to food, according <laughs> to the local dot it. Oh, because it's based out of Italy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think that gets wacky URL or unique because it just happens to be from Italy. So it has a dot it instead. Last also, moment. if if all Italian websites end in dot it, that's great. Head to GMS dot it. <laughs> what, uh, what would the uh, URL be for the movie about Pennywise? <laughs> it dot it. <laughs> No, that's not for that. That's for <laughs> it's not a unique one, but it, it, it's still good. Uh, if you do exclamation point bingo, though, maybe some of these things will be on here. Let's find out the worst food crimes you can commit, according to Italians from the local dot it. Claire Speak wrote this back in February of 2022, and this is according to Italians from fruity pizza toppings to spaghetti bolognese. Bolognese, an international study has revealed which of the most common crimes against Italian cuisine are seen as the most and least offensive. And we start with number one. One. Putting ketchup on pasta. Ooh. Ooh. Yucky. No. No. Uh-uh. uh-uh. I mean, I understand sometimes you just have to make do with what you have. And I, I get uh, that. But if this is a choice? Yeah. Icky. Icky. Scrapple. Gross. This has nothing to do with Scrapple, but... Mm-mm. But that's also... <laughs> I'm, I, I don't think I need to elaborate. That That is the answer. Uh, just pasta with ketchup. Two... Um, there, there is interesting stuff in the copy though, because they, they, uh, they surveyed people from a bunch of different countries, and the one thing about ketchup on pasta is it's one of, one of only two food crimes on the list that Americans also deem unacceptable. <laughs> so it's a, this is a universal thing. No one is okay with the, the ketchup on the pasta. Uh, but number two is putting pasta in cold water then boiling it. Uh, uh, this uh, definitely don't do this in front of an Italian unless you want them to run screaming from the kitchen. Uh, you're supposed to add pasta to water that is already gently boiling. Um, if you add pasta to cold water, um, uh, it's uh, oh, it's apparently also disdained um, around the world. Yeah. Um, with only um, Ameri- uh, American, American, Chinese and Hong Kongers more likely to be okay with it. Okay, so so you're saying that there's some places where like you'll pour the water in the pot and then just throw <laughs> the pasta in there and then bring it to a boil. Right. Wow. Yeah, I've never even tried that. And I'm a horrible cook. Three. <laughs> Figures that it was going to do that. It'd be me. <laughs> uh, number three is serving pasta with a side dish. Uh, a mound of spaghetti would be nice as an accompaniment to your grilled meat or fish. Well, think again, because if you're in Italy, or the idea of having pasta as a Contorno ranked as one of the worst possible food crimes with a score of minus 63. As all Italians know, pasta is served before the meat, fish, or main course as a primo. No other country surveyed had a problem with this, though. The French were especially big fans of pasta as a plot de accompaniment. Of course, they threw a French word in there for you. <sighs> so, so, I'm so lucky. Uh, I will tell you uh, that... This is exactly what I was talking about earlier, where, like, you go to the Olive Garden, and it's like, yeah, you can have a, a steak on the side of your pasta Alfredo, and it's like, I, I, I don't want that. I want it mixed in, so. Even though I guess that's still not technically what they're talking about. Whatever. Just continue. <laughs> four. Uh, number four, cutting long pasta with a knife while eating. Um, we haven't gotten, I don't actually see it on here. Um, Because it's referring to something they haven't talked about, which is uh, snap, like breaking pasta, long pasta before you're putting it in the pot. Um, It says the message is is clear. Don't snap it. Don't cut it. (laughs) You need to learn how to tour your spaghetti. Uh, The spaghetti is supposed to be long, and you need to leave it that way. Uh, It says this habit for another one people in the country apparently found disturbing with a score of negative 
46. I've got another oh, confession to make. It took me until uh, it, it, it took me until I was a senior in high school to know why they gave a spoon with your pasta dishes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm out with my then girlfriend, and I'm like, I never understood why they put this thing. And she goes, Watch. She probably called me an idiot. Probably. <laughs> Makes all the sense in the world, though, when you think about it. Yeah, it, it works well. Five. Uh, putting cream and carbonara sauce. By the way, uh, there's a, a TikTok channel, probably uh, Andy Cooks or something. The whole premise is like he opens up the fridge and he says, hey, babe, what do you want to eat? And he was talking about how there's a certain thing you need for carbonara. And if you don't have it, then you are not making carbonara. And I don't know what that necessarily is. But apparently if you put cream in your carbonara, then you're not doing it right. Which I do remember him mentioning. He like made it where you melt all these things together. And that's what makes the creaminess of the carbonara sauce. So, yeah. Don't do it, apparently. Stern warnings from Italian chefs. I'm very frustrated with this. There's no need for cream in the authentic recipe. Six. And number six is topping seafood pasta with cheese. This rule may not seem as obvious to non-Italians, but we don't recommend asking for the grated Parmesan after being served a steaming plate of spaghetti alle Vongol. Vongole. That's, sea, that's seafood. Uh, it's, it's a major faux pas in Italy. It scored a negative 39. Um, Americans gave it a far more positive rating of positive 38. So uh, cheese on everything here. Yeah, I, I'm guilty of that, especially would seafood you, Alfredo. <laughs> would you like some grated Parmesan over your grilled cheese? Yes, more cheese, please. Seven. It's true. It's true. Uh, don't rinse cooked pasta in cold water. I've never rinsed my pasta. Yeah. I didn't know you're supposed. To, you're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, mm. While perhaps seen as more senseless than revolting, this practice scored minus twenty three. In Italy, many recipes call for the starchy pasta water to be conserved and used to finish the sauce, which I have seen. You take the like little thing and you pour it in, and that helps you with the sauce. Eight. <laughs> Number eight, our one uh, non-pasta-related one we're going to talk about this morning. Uh, don't drink cappuccino after lunch. Yeah, it's a, that's a breakfast thing. Yeah, no, you, you, they won't refuse to make you a cappuccino at 3 p.m., but you might get a confused look and other customers might be a little upset with you. Yeah. Um, Italians give this habit a score of negative 23. Um, the rest of Europe is fine with the concept, scored at a positive 65 in Spain, 62 in Germany, and 53 in France. So very specific to Italy. Nine. Boiling pasta without salt. I've never done that. <laughs> this is a face of somebody who has never done that. <laughs> You've had a pretty good track record for this list, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm closer than I'm far away, but hey, you just pour the water in there and you throw the pasta in there. Boom! Pasta! Apparently you're supposed to salt your water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Italians will tell you that a pinch of salt is essential in the cooking water for pasta. One. Zero. Um, and then number ten, eating garlic bread with pasta. That's right. The rest Oops. of the world might ask what could possibly be wrong with this. The concept of filling a baguette with garlic butter and baking it just doesn't really exist in Italy. Even if it does seem to exist in every Italian restaurant on the planet outside of Italy, Americans are particularly enthusiastic about this combination at a positive 83. The Brits are at positive 80, but Italians gave this a thumbs down with a negative 14. There you go. Worst food crimes you can commit according to Italians from the local dot it. Uh, go ahead and rate me, chat. Go ahead and how'd I do? Uh, someone is uh, critiquing me. Uh, I good Apollo who doesn't salt their water. Down says, "Ooh, salt your water." Ryan, salt is your friend. All right. In my defense, salting your water takes like seven seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I am so not cut out for cooking. <laughs> Because it, it's it's like an art almost, right? You're supposed to like take your time and get really engrossed in it. And I'm like, I don't want to. I I think if we ever you know have the bandwidth where we have people who help us with the show, I will gladly do like uh, some YouTube content with Hefty does cooking. 
Like, I would gladly do it. I don't have any problem because it will help me learn. But until then, until then. Uh, Panda says two seconds. It takes two seconds. The salt <laughs> should be next to your stove. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Paula says, I'm going to put pasta between two things of garlic bread and eat it like a pasta sandwich. <laughs> Uh, Groggy, my shell and I are taking an Italian cooking class in Amalfi. I'll come back to you with this. Uh, Awkward just panda. Bigot tears make excellent pasta water because of all the salt <laughs> content. Uh, Drew may go, oh, yes, one, the one time I don't put Parmigiano on pasta is when there's seafood. Oh, I, I violate that so bad. Yeah, I, I would be okay with breaking that rule, too. <laughs> Because it's delicious. <laughs> I'm gonna put pasta between two things of garlic bread and eat a pasta sandwich. I would do that too. That sounds delicious. Uh, 7:39 <laughs> on this morning radio show that plays games. It's 10:39 out east. 3:39 for those watching GMS in the UK. Uh, thank you for being here. If you would like the new GMS emote, it's animated. It is about being in the UK. Uh, you can get it, become a Patreon subscriber right now, and you get access to it. We give it to you for free with your $12 subscription as a Patreon subscriber. Find out more at Gaming Morning Show's Patreon page, patreon.com slash gaming morning show. All right. <laughs> nice. Today's <is> National <laughs> Carbonara Day, uh, the day that brings joy to Italians, foodies, and pasta lovers who simply can't get enough of the dish. Deceptively simple to look at and extremely delicious, a good spaghetti carbonara. Needs time and patience to taste and look just right. It can be paired with wine, soft drinks, and even iced tea or coffee. The dish is filling, nutritious, and easy to eat. There are a number of hypotheses about how the carbonara came to be. and It is believed that the dish was invented by charcoal makers who would prepare themselves a filling meal using readily available ingredients. Others believe the inventor of the Mediterranean diet, Ansel Keys, was the one who created a dish of egg yolk powder and baking with spaghetti to increase the carbohydrate intake. Of the American soldiers during the Second World War. The point is, we don't really know who invented Carbonara. Fair enough. It's from nationaltoday.com. <laughs> they tried. They tried. Uh, there's only two things I want in this world, Krog. He says, Michelle on a pasta sandwich. <laughs> in that order. <laughs> you can news if you wanna alright here's a story that we're tracking at this hour on this morning radio show that plays games thank you so much for being here on this Thursday Hefty and Sean uh, earlier we told you about the porcupine who was mur er, I mean uh, relocated <laughs> out of Iowa uh, this story now is about what you might find in a South Carolina lake if you show up to check it out uh, this is what happened to somebody a piranha like fish says Ben Hooper of UPI was caught in a South Carolina lake. A teenager fishing there made a once-in-a-lifetime catch. A South American Paku fish, I believe. Paku, P-A-C-U. Uh, this person who's 15 was fishing in a lake when he reeled in a Paku, a piranha cousin famous for its human-like teeth. I'm gonna have to pull it. I was going to say, you're going to have to pull up a picture of a Paku fish, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, told a TV station, again, once in a lifetime catch, the uh, Department of Natural Resources confirmed the fish was in fact a Paku, said the fish are occasionally found in South Carolina after being illegally released. This type of fish, quote, is periodically caught in Hartwell, which is where this lake, uh, that's the name of the lake. And this is a popular aquarium species that can outgrow the owner's aquarium. Uh, said it was illegal to release Paku into waters in South Carolina, but the species is not believed to pose a significant threat to the local ecosystem. They are related to piranhas, but the species vegetarian, primarily feeding on tree nuts. The fish has an unearned reputation for biting the testicles of swimmers. But the myth was a joke that was started by a professor at the Copenhagen Museum of Natural History when a Paku was caught by a fisherman in Denmark. There's some fish. Some fish teeth. Yeah, I don't know about that. Why? How? Oh. Uh, who knows? Huh. Apollo, <laughs> oh, that fish's teeth look better than mine. <laughs> well, that was, sorry, that was a Paku who got orthodontic work, Apollo. So. <clears throat> 
if you've never had a chance to have braces, that's that's what that that fish had a better chance. So. <laughs> I want someone to do a science experiment and put braces on a Paku fish now. <laughs> well, clearly they have. Did you not see that fish? Yes! Nice I word. I did it! <laughs> I watched that all the way. I was trying so hard to be patient. Wow. Wow. I scored 100 points! <laughs> this game is easy. <laughs> Good set of chompers right there, said Drew Mega. Quiet goes, well, time to pack it up for the day. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't want fish with human teeth. Like, I'm no. actually fine with the piranha or the barracuda or whatever. Like, I get it. They have some sharp teeth. They can murder you. That's cool. Uh, but when you start putting our teeth in their bodies, that's like a Freaky Friday thing that nobody ordered. Yeah. Those are our teeth. Get out of here. Uh, there's a, uh, I don't remember their name, but there's a person who does Instagram reels and TikToks who, uh, one of their bits is a person named Steve who's helping God make, you know, the world or whatever. And Steve always comes out with some creepy stuff that looks like something that Steve's like, hey, I made a fish. That's, that's cool. <laughs> it has human teeth. Has, what? Has some spare teeth lying around. It's like the, uh, they, they had a bit, I think, with bullet teeth, or uh, bullet teeth, jeez, teeth are on my mind, um, <laughs> bullet ants, and it's like, we're going to make this ant that can, like, give you the most powerful sting in the world, or something like that. It's like, why? Why? Nope, sorry. I'll clear, I'll clear the ball first, and then I'll, never mind, I'm going to not <laughs> clear the ball, and then I will tell you what Chad is saying. Sorry, you all are talking fast. I like I like the engagement. I just can't keep up without moving my mouse. I think I need to get a, a foot pedal. And I bet I could move the... like. Can't you get foot pedals that scroll mm -hmm. up and down? Yep. Yeah, one of mine... One of my pedals is set for a scroll down for when I play music and need to scroll the, uh, the music down without my hands. It works uh, pretty well. Pack it in for the day. Uh, yeah, nah, heck of a dentist. So, okay, so I think the reality is that we learned today that there are fish, um, that also are dentists. I think that's what we've learned. Now, Kalaf opened up the article, says, the last sentence of the article says, William Fink, a piranha research at the University of Michigan, said there have been no recorded instances of Paku fish biting humans' genitals or otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> the famous genitals only fishes. Oh, why were you there? I bicycled to set it down and I hit it. I'm so mad. Oh, that would have been sick. And then you can oh, score from there. Feet. <sighs> I think I just pulled a muscle in my head. I was so excited because I'm good at bicycle kicking. It just usually doesn't do anything useful. And that time it yeah, set it down yeah. in a perfect spot. <sighs> Someday I'm going to score a bicycle kick goal that I intended to make. Okay. <sighs> okay. Whatever. Um, a good morning to Dungeon Master KJ. Good morning. It's good to see you. Nice chat. <sighs> I think Lonnie is his name, Ryan. What? Uh, how do you feel about a piranha <laughs> that can walk into your house? Because that exists. What? Apollo. How? What? I will admit that I worked in a, a department store. Like a big box department store. Like a Walmart, Target kind of thing. And I was a contractor who worked at like a booth within the said department store. And I would go and look at the aquariums during, like, you know, breaks. And the person that worked the aquarium showed me uh, the 
Not beta fish. Those are the ones that have, like, the really, like, long fins and, you know, like, floaty fins, right? And they like to look at themselves <laughs> in the mirror. That's the beta fish. Um, yeah. It was some car carnivorous fish, but they were, like, little mini bitty, itty bitty little piranhas. And then you could go and take the feeder fish. With Like, sh it showed me how to, like, take the uh, net... Right, and I could scoop them and then dump them in the the little itty bitty piranhas tank, and that was fun. I probably fed them too many. Uh, Kanda, uh, Kanda. <laughs> <laughs> I combined take care and panda. Awkwardish panda, have a great rest of your day. Uh, we'll give Awkwardish panda a shout out here in a moment. Uh, streaming probably later today, uh, off and on after we're done, if not whilst we're on the air. Uh, have a great day. Eat all the garlic pasta sandwiches for me. We do have an obsession with garlic bread. Yeah, it's so yummy. And so easy to make, a hefty could do it. You were doing some work. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Ooh, that was close. Too much traffic. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to jump in front of you. I was already off the ground. Uh, Kayla, have on a tag to the genitals or otherwise. Point. Kayla, this is why you're so good. It goes tree nuts only. <laughs> get it? Get it? I do get it. Okay. Tree genitals. Uh, there's a fish called a snakehead fish, and it has the muscle power to crawl on land and also has a single lung, allowing it to survive above water for at least 48 hours? Question mark. Is that true? Uh, news to me. All right, Groggy sent us a TikTok about a pistol shrimp. Yeah, pistol shrimp are cool. And then we talked about them on the show. And then adds that Lonnie makes them. Who is Lonnie? <laughs> Do you know who Lonnie is? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not. Why would I know who Lonnie is? <laughs> Groggy, are you open journaling again? <laughs> Groggy, what? All right, I scored over 100 points. You would have been MVP, but we lost again. Uh, Groggy, no, Apollo. Hefty special garlic bread. Don't worry about the mold. It's for fla I don't eat. <laughs> One time on this show, <laughs> talked about having some bread that was in the same kind of bag with <laughs> one piece of bread that was moldy. Was it's, it even on the show? Or it was, was it? on the show. And since that day, Apollo has never forgotten. <laughs> oh, Lonnie is the name of the person who makes the TikToks. <laughs> Thank you, Groggy. <laughs> I mean, that was very useful. I just was not tracking. That's. We have enough toilet paper. What? Good to know. Uh, this backstock update brought to you by Bob. Maybe Bob's <laughs> journaling too, voice wise. I don't know. Aquinas says, I'm so confused. So am I. <laughs> Thank you, Bob, says Apollo. <laughs> You're welcome. Everyone knows Bob does inventory on Thursdays. <laughs> My head hurts. Uh, good day, Keith Anthony. I just had poppy seed bagel with salmon and cream cheese. Thank you for following the rules. Remember, if you're getting food, you must show and tell when you come back. I do like salmon. 
<laughs> Tim? No, Mike Trout. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, it's time for sports. <laughs> what a great segue. Uh, chat, did the Mets win? Start putting your yeses or nos in the chat. Did the Mets win? Let us know. Uh, that is our famous baseball season game that we play from now until forever because baseball season goes a while. Uh, yesterday, Sean, your Calgary Flames, a 3-1 win at Winnipeg, just like we expected. Almost looked like they were knew, knew what they were doing for most of that game. Yeah. Jacob Markstrom. Oh, man. Welcome back. Been a while. Yeah. <laughs> Missed you. Uh, so here's the scenario. The Flames finish with a trip to Vancouver on Saturday. Home games against the Predators and Sharks. Vancouver and, and San Jose are two of the worst teams in the AHL. The Predators are competing with the Flames for a playoff spot, although Calgary is now three points up. Both teams... Oh, no, the Predators have two more games to play than the Flames, so that could still be a problem. Jets finish out with Predators, Sharks, Wild, and Avalanche. Those last two games are on the road against teams that are already in the postseason. The Avalanche are first in the Central, Wild are third. So, in theory, the thing should be shaping up the way the Calgary would want. But we also lost to the Blackhawks, so whatever. Yeah, could you imagine if we had not lost that game for no reason? We'd be at 91 points. The Jets would be at 89. But the Jets also have one more game to play. It's it's looking slim, but... We kept kept our hopes alive last night. Yeah. Also, uh, only three games left, Sean, so only three more chances to tie the all-time loss record in overtime. So. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so it, was, it, was, it, out. it was fun to watch, though. That was, that was good. Uh, it was a good game. The Clippers have beat the Lakers yet again, 125-118, to 118, so the Lakers did lose. Meanwhile, Quiet Time Gaming's Tampa Bay Lightning also lost. Edmonton beat Anaheim 3-1. to one. All right, we asked you, did the Mets win? Sean, your official guest, did the Mets win? Uh, they did not. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You, you're you watching too much baseball yet. You can't play this game yeah. anymore. Uh, well, it was closer. It was closer walk-off home run for the Brewers, so yeah. that was in the highlights all over the place, so I definitely saw that. 7-6 win at Milwaukee for the Brewers. Uh, I am Jeff Downs' is D Tigers narrowly defeated by Houston, 8-2. <laughs> uh, the Miami, the Marlin is a fish, 5-2 win against Minnesota. Austin attacked 12 New York Yankees, a 4-2 win over Philadelphia. Quiet's Tampa Bay Rays, a 7-2 win at Washington. The Rays are now 6-0 to start the baseball season. And you're... LA Angels of Anaheim on the east side of Los Angeles with the left side Disneyland trip. 4-3 win at Seattle. Nice. Another uh, good showing for Otani on the mound. One run in six innings. Not bad. And uh, your Toronto Blue Jays for Drew Mega. 3-0 shutout win at Kansas City. So there you go. Uh, that is your sports. Sports brought to you as always by King Gray. Find King Gray on the internet. Sports. All right. Uh, next hour... We're going to do something we've never done in the history of this show. So get ready for that. We will play our final Our Crew Name of the Month game. Which we've done before, but we'll tell you why <laughs> this is unprecedented. <laughs> Am I going to make it? Probably not. No, all right. Cool. Cool. <laughs> I'll also play Don't Let the Person Floating from the Balloons Fall in the Monster's Mouth. Oh, yes. Kalaf. Master starts today. Thank you. Golf claps for Kalaf. <laughs> K Laugh Memorial Golf Spot. All right, come back. More on the way. Facebook Gaming, Twitch, YouTube, Gaming Morning Show. TV.
just let me know. I'd be happy to buy it if you want to, you know, bring me on over. You know, maybe you're good at cooking. You want to bring over a meal? I'd love to buy you pizza and beer in return. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I pretty much like talking into a microphone. That's my favorite thing to do on Earth. And so I like to do that as much as possible. And you, chat, allow me to be able to do that. So, it's pretty okay. Pretty okay. Uh, I had a good penny shopping day yesterday. Got jars of cheese ball, regularly seven bucks for a penny. Pretzels, regular seven bucks. Got Valentine's Day candy, Ghirardelli squares. Let's go. Let's go. Nice score, says Jack. Uh, Sis says, that's so nice of Sean. Absolutely. Uh, Sis is a incredibly talented artist, I learned yesterday. Um, so, Sis, if you ever want to make me a work of art, uh, you're invited to. I will send you pizza and beer. If you don't drink beer, I can send you pizza and soda. If you don't eat pizza, I can send you soda. Morning, gamer. Welcome in. It's Gaming Morning Show. Thank you so much for being with us wherever you may be on Facebook Gaming, Twitch, YouTube, and at GamingMorningShow.tv. So glad you could be along for a three hour adventure into the unknown, even though there's no ice princesses nor anyone who likes to finish each other's sandwiches that's, that's something that was left in a movie that apparently decided to quote from that movie was probably from like what 2013 or something like that so, where's where's it at exactly into your vocal cords are in fine monday form i can see <clears throat> hi that gooey in here <laughs> You really shouldn't have started the show from a canyon. <laughs> it's an interesting choice. <laughs> uh, just... Alright, so now, uh, since we have to wait for the wheat. Oh, I'm... Yep, yep, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. Um, we have to wait for the wheat, and that'll help us get the cows and the sheep. But now that we have more than two chickens, if I come over here with wheat seeds... Mm -hmm. And I give one to that chicken, he's in love. And Aww. I give one to that that chicken, and he's in love. And then look at this. Oh. They live to make a little baby chicken. Oh, they get really in love, is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. And now there's now there's a baby chicken. And then, and then they murder it. Not yet. You have to wait for him to grow up and then murder it in front of his parents. Oh my goodness. So so, so do they continue the making? Only, the, look in my eyes. Look in my eyes. That's the only way to get the meat. There has to be devastation. <laughs> I will not tolerate. I will not accept this. Today, find GMS on Facebook Gaming, Twitch, YouTube, and GamingMorningShow.tv. It's all coming up on Gaming Morning Show. Time for hour number three, right now. Mm -hmm. Morning, gamer. Welcome back. Gaming Morning Show continues. Thank you so much for being with us for a full three hours on Tuesday, March 7th, 2023. Hefty Goof Sports Gaming filling in for Eagle Eagle the Mathematical, Eagle, who uh, held he... held that left side of the screen down real well while you were gone. Good. Did he do a good job? Oh, yeah. I don't think chat has a single complaint about Eagle Eagle the Mathematical. Eagle. Perfect. Uh, but said that it's better when you're here because... Oh. One plus one is better than one plus minus one. Caw. Yeah. Win $10 next Monday with exclamation point bingo. Type exclamation point bingo in chat right now and get this hour's bingo card. Coming up on Gaming Morning Show. Don't let the person floating from the balloons fall in the monster's mouth. 
and GMS. Morning Gaming Renews. Get ready for your takeaways that were pretty okay. And the clip of the day. Find GMS on Facebook Gaming, Twitch, YouTube, and GamingMorningShow.tv. Time for hour number three, right now. Morning! Gamer, welcome back. Gaming Morning Show continues. Thank you so much for being here, wherever you may be. Facebook Gaming, Twitch, YouTube, and Gaming Morning Show TV. I am Sports Talk Gaming. He is Hefty Goof, is what we would say if he was introducing us. That is Sports Talk Gaming on the left side of your screen. I am Hefty Goof. We're trying to make share play work in the background, and I was smiling because you were sitting there uh, hearing me twice. I'm assuming. No. No. Oh, your smile made me think because I, I had muted myself in the party. So here I am oh, thinking yeah. I got distracted. So, yeah. I had my PlayStation sounds. I love lamp. The, <laughs> the main, the the, uh, the intro screen of the game we we're going to play was making creepy noises. So I had to mute. <laughs> uh, will you do me a favor really quick? Uh, do we have uh, any rant music? Uh, let's see. Or is yeah. this, a, well, this would be a camper's corner if we were in a game. Right. Right. Uh, is this rant music? <laughs> nah. Nah. I mean, I have sad music. I guess we could kind of throw a fit. Should I go sad music? Yeah, we could go sad music. Or I could do the... It's kind of ranty. <laughs> Alright, we'll go sad music. Here's the thing. If you roll out a feature, and it works really well the first time, Make it work really well the rest of the time. If it's going to be crap, let it be crap right away. Yeah. I, I don't want surprise crap. I want initial crap that continues to be crappy if it's going to be crappy, okay? Yep. We were fortunate when we started to... We, we decided, for you, chat, probably, maybe for us, I don't know, final hour crew, we would start playing some... You know, different games. Minecraft Monday, Teammate Tuesday. You get the drill, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so we thought, hey, it would be fun since we do Name of the Month. Let's play the Name of the Month game on the show. And so we decided mm -hmm. Thursdays would be a day we'd do that or we'd play a new release if we didn't have whatever. And so here we go saying Clunky Hero is our Name of the Month for, I think, February or something. And Sean and I are like, oh, light bulb. They make share play now. We can just have you... Share play your screen on over, and you know what worked right away? That, perfectly. First try. We're like, this is amazing. This is this is exactly what we need. And ever since, it doesn't work, and it's nope. infuriating. And that that little message it says on my screen it says Hefty Goof is joining Share Play, and then a second later it says Hefty Goof can't. Sh join share play and then there's a middle finger emoji for some reason yeah and, and for some reason it's blaming me like it's my fault i can't join mm -hmm. yep so i guess and, i gotta go parentheses, buy there's a link to buy playstation, I, go buy PlayStation <laughs> I just i just needed that for the expense report yeah i needed that clip so that that was more for me Jen, <clears throat> not for you so frustrating Oh, yeah. Uh, hi, Final Hour crew. Hello <laughs> to the Final Hour oh. crew. Also, this whole time, you have a soapbox. You could have been on the soapbox. <laughs> it's a platform. <laughs> Good job, Jack. I have a soapbox and I intend to use it. Darn it. Made of soggy cardboard. Not mine! Because I don't put my soap in the shower like most people. <laughs> oh, that one's actually, I think, losing its scent finally. What? A, how about cold, gold moss? Gold or cold moss? Yeah. I thought it was gold. It is. That one's still got a good scent. Pine tar? Yeah, that mm. never leaves. So. Nope. Uh, DrSquatch.com, promo code DiscBrick10, I think. Go to Mike's channel. He'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it smells nice. At least through the box. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. Uh, 
Hi, Quiet I'm Gaming, Jack, Groggy or Die, Drew Mega, all of you wonderful people who are here. KJ, thank you for being here. I I, I can't overcome this. I'm I'm that devastated. Oh. Kalaf's gonna watch golf with the, the Masters. Downs is here. Keith and I mean there's so many of you, and normally I would want to say hi to each and every one of you, but I don't want to anymore. So mm -hmm. See, I, I had I had hope today. Oh no! Because um, uh, uh, we when we were doing Clunky Hero, that was technically a PlayStation Four game that I was playing on the PlayStation Five, and it worked. And then I can't remember what else we tried that didn't work. But Chia, I know we've tried and it hasn't worked. But that's I'm playing it a PlayStation Five game. And so I was like, oh, maybe it, maybe that's the disconnect. And so not for broadcast, I had the option and I, I installed the PlayStation 4 version or it's only PlayStation 4. I can't remember which one. And so I was like, maybe that'll work. It, just, it still didn't work. <sighs> Never. Never. Chat, do you even want to play Don't Let the Person Floating from the Bloons Fall in the Monster's Mouth? I mean, we are only three Bloons away from 1700, so... Be quiet. Well, good day to you too. Picks up the ball. I think I think quiet would be a great fill-in for Bob as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Uh, Jack's a serious question. Do you ever put good soap in closed drawers for the scent? I never have, but mm -hmm. yeah. I could imagine that would work. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Quiet says Bob is my father's name after all. My father's Bob's father's your, name. Bob's your dad? What a twist. <laughs> Moon Knight Shyamalan. Hi, Mel B on YouTube. <laughs> Hello, FHC. I guess it is kind of rough when you're just joining the show and Hefty's all... Wah, wah. All right, fine. Let's play the game. You, you, you all have fun. Okay. To see the record for the most balloons banked in, don't let the person floating from the balloons fall in the monster's mouth. Remember to type the easy to remember acronym exclamation point D L T P F F T B F I T M M R E C. All right, here's the deal. The other thing that's not working like it was, they added a new ad to this page. And so now instead of me just scrolling down and having it perfectly fit, I have to reposition. Don't let the person floating from the balloons fall in the monster's mouth. That went away for several, several months and now it's back. So whatever. I, I, let's just shut it down. Let's just get out of here. All right. Thank you for being here. We had a good time. Uh, see you on s Friday. It's Friday. It's a Friday. All right. Uh, 1,397 banked balloons. This is history. Guess your letters. God, I'm really making this fun, aren't I? It was really awesome. We, we, would, we would talk Man, correct. off air about how happy we were about SharePlay working so well. It was so handy. D. No. Hey! Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. We got an R from Drew Mega. R. No. We have an E from Drew Mega. E. Yes. We have an A from Drew Mega. <laughs> A. Correct. <laughs> Uh, the A for Quiet Hit, the E for Mel B Hit, an H from Jack. H. No. All right, I think the last word might be 11. I'm pretty sure. <gasps> Downs. Now that's a big swing. I am JF Downs. Good Apollo 11. Cracked. Cracked. I'm good Apollo 11. <laughs> Uh, okay, that made me cheer up. 1,401 bank doubloons. You were here for history, chat. I could have On a history <laughs> clue. This show's all falling into place again. Everything is fine. Uh, let's go to places with an apostrophe. wonder what the first letter to be guessed will be. Hmm. I wonder what it could be. T. T it is. <laughs> Oh, an S from Downs. <laughs> S. Correct. Do you have a bathhouse? Why would I have a bathhouse, Jack? <laughs> hey, Jack, I'm sorry. I have some homework for you. Okay. 
<laughs> I don't try to do this for you if I don't understand something, but we do have to ask you this question. What did you mean by my favorite pasta is the Renaissance, but I'm partial to the beat era of the 60s? I need to know. I, I can't figure that one out. A T and an A. T. A. Yes. Yes. Nice. We're going to get a perfect here. I already know is what it, it is. Yeah, I do too. And it's a place. This is kind it's of fun. Santa's bathhouse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, groggy. We'll try Santa's workshop and see what happens. <laughs> groggy is cracked. 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 Jack. We'll wait to start the other puzzle till you answer. <laughs> All right, Jack says, I say a pasta, you say a history, you some making a funna of my uh, people. I'm Scottish. <laughs> Did that it's clarify clear, anything? It's all cleared up. <laughs> You're just great. <laughs> just great. Uh, Downs, correct. All right, let's do one more. Uh, one more. Uh, places, places. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is a Thursday, isn't it? It sure is. Hey, it's King Gray! Gymnastics routine! <laughs> uh, that was a good joke from yesterday. That was great. Uh, this show is fun. An N from Groggy. N. N. Correct. A T from Mel B. T. Ding, ding, ding. An R from Quiet. R. Cha-ching! Ooh, we're hot. Hot. There we are. That's a big switch. Show me really large stadium. <laughs> An A from Jack. A. Cha-ching. Whoa. Copia. Now that's a big swing. You are nuts. Show me M. Pyre State Build Ing. Correct. Copia got that before we were done with the one minute timer. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was the opposite of this. It's so good. Uh, Copious cracked. Trademark 2023 by the GMS official terrible sound effects department. Uh, Quiet says, now that was some really Mario growing noise energy. <laughs> yeah, it was. All right. Uh, oh no, Sean, we're only at 145 balloons now. Oh. Uh, here's the deal. Ones. We have to do this the silly way, but here we are. Um, we can't share play, but what we're doing for the first time in GMS history, although technically this could fit within the PG-13 uh, framework, because you do get a couple of F-bombs or maybe I, one. I could manually bleep them. I mean, do your best, but we are... <laughs> willing to play this game this is the downside the downs side to picking a name solely on uh, picking a game solely on its name is you really don't know what you're going to get until we've already awarded it name of the month and again if you have uh, non-pg-13 material in your game it doesn't mean that you have a bad game it's just that we try to keep a pg-13 stream be uh, a show because we want people to be able to listen to it in their cars or whatever the case may be um, so anyway we are in non-pg-13 mode for the final hour crew just to play this game and, and check it out. Uh, Sean, though, said this is going to be kind of fun. I think it's going to be really interesting. It's, okay. uh, yeah, I, I think it'll be worth it. I think the game gets more intense than we would enjoy on the show, but it takes quite a while, from my understanding, to get there. So I think the beginning of this game is going to be a lot of fun. Okay. So anyway, just be... I mean, I, you, I've never <laughs> understood our audience would be like, no, this isn't okay with us, but... <laughs> Uh, we do want to tell you that this could be a little bit more of an intense game than we uh, have played before. Funk! Funk! Funk. I heard funk. Definitely funk. I mean, we might as Should we just get Austin on the show right now so that Austin can just start <laughs> ripping through him? Yeah, probably. Okay. Can we call Austin? Paging Austin Attack. <laughs> Paging Austin Attack 12. All right. Here we go. Uh, you need to probably do the share screen, I guess. That's how we're going to... Because we're not... I go... You don't want to do share play. Oh, yeah, you forgot you have to do it that way. All right. Um, 
Yeah, I think... Oh, yeah, and then you move your camera into the spot. Okay. And welcome to Not For Broadcast. Well, fail. Like I said, welcome to Not For Broadcast. <laughs> uh, you can uh, see where SharePlay wasn't working there, though. Yeah, we proof to our complaints. <laughs> proof to our complaints. All right, I just got to slide that there and then turn off my camera, and then that should be pretty okay. The only thing also is, is like I said, the audio is always so, like, almost gated, so hopefully it'll be better. I'm going to turn your audio here. All right, here we go. Not for broadcast. Our uh, March name of the month. Oh, what's what safe slot do we want? <laughs> oh, it's got to be slot three, right? For sure. Um, We'll go... Assuming this is like a like a normal difficulty, we'll go normal difficulty. And then just send as much game audio as you possibly can. And then turn your mic down a little bit because I have you cranked. Check, check. That's, that should be okay. Oh, this is like the Ron Burgundy opening. This is intense. Oh, that was a lot of static. <laughs> <laughs> Loading screens can be skipped by inventing a time machine. <laughs> uh, give me a little bit less, Mike. <laughs> I hope Hefty gets scared. Why would you like me to be scared? Is this a scary game? I hope not. I think it gets scary eventually. So what's the premise? Are we in the control room? Whoa! Okay, that was a person I walking by. Dave does need a better cell phone. It sounds like he's on a walkie-talkie. Crazy. Can I tell you the truth? Exercise with him. So I'm going to tell you the truth, though. I um, have actually... This is a job I used to do. You're missing the night of the election? Like my sensor button. Where's that? I can't see it. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main choice tonight. Okay. Next is going to be to throw the news titles on screen two. There'll be a countdown. I'll count you in as well. Just relax. It's all great. We got viewers. Sport. Sport. 
Imagine stepping the really star Lawrence from the front about his new movie, The Mad mm -hmm. Mate. And, of course, we'll be going live to advance headquarters to hear what the leaders of this fledgling party have to say on their head story. Right. One, two, three, two, one. It's lovely, mate. Nailed it. I can do this. This job's easy. Have a great day at work, uh, KJ. I could crank, I could add some more gain to the audio to make it louder, but it's gonna create a lot of noise too, and I don't want to do that. Chat, let me know if it's just god awful and I can crank it up, but it, it's it's coming across okay. We have the captions too. of a severe lack of actual policy and of being deliberately reckless. The opposition parties have all continued to boost their advantage over overwhelming masses that have yet to appear public. This is how interference works on TV. Right, it's going well. Your number two now is plenty uh, over at the end of the set. Make sure you don't play too early or we'll all get fired. Now the clock at the top is counting you down to the end. When it reaches zero, press one of the three play ad buttons over there at the bottom. Why does the anchor look like they're like a 16 year old? <laughs> this is his first job. He he could have done this job. We could have been the anchor. This is a lot of TV 101 chat. This is fairly yeah, this is realistic. <laughs> Including the welcome home, Johnny. Come on now. <laughs> Has impact font. <laughs> Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Later, we'll be hearing from Scott Alexa winner Lance. But first, get ready to go to Megan on screen four. Is here the star of both stage and screen? Megan? Thank you, Jeremy. Megan Wolf took the correspondence, and today I'm going to be starting. Shakespeare. Right, go to Blunder Clatch on screen three when she says his name. Blunder Clatch? <laughs> Three, go to three. Oh, my show was better. Switch to two. Yeah, no, I think you had the right sequencing, to be honest. What'd he say? <laughs> he called him Thunder Twat. Yeah, Downs is right. Your show was better. <laughs> you you go one, two, one. There was a lot of video captured for this. Nice. Thunder the what? You'll remember that that's the true thing. One soul to fight for a man. Another soul. 
Did you just get that reaction? <laughs> I, I sure did. She doesn't believe him. Nope. <laughs> this is a very real time game, isn't it? Yeah. I'm I'm not I'm barely even listening to the words that are being said because I'm trying to concentrate yeah. on like the directing. That's cool. So this is our March name of the month. This is not for broadcast. First playthrough, just starting to dabble. This is called a darkly comedic game of televised chaos. Oh, this is a VR game, too. Oh, oh well, don't worry, won't do it again. Shit, you did it again. Okay, don't panic. I'll explain how to deal with swearing at the break. Beep. I've swapped the and Jeremy on screen one for a VT of the movie clip. You'll get a countdown on the screen, but I'll just let Megan give you it. Again, why is this guy on the phone with you? Why didn't he just report to work? What are you trying to do? See that screen on the right? Yeah. I have to keep that all lined up. Weird. Oh, is this a clip from the movie? Yeah. Jubbly. Watch out behind you! I don't understand the frequency part. It's just something to make you have to pay attention to that. Because then they'll probably start throwing that in while you're trying to work on, like, the shots and stuff. It's just to make it's it like more busy chaotic. work, yeah. Yeah. At the end of the clip, you'll want to play another ad. Remember to use the clock at the top to count your in. Where's that clock at the top? <laughs> oh, where is it? It's it's so subtle. Ah, oh, you picked a B this time. Yeah, I went A, B, C. Who saw that coming? <laughs> Oh, you only got a B for that segment. Get wrecked, Sean. Mine was still better. He got quieter. Is he still talking? Yeah. Oh, he got it's, really quiet. I can barely hear him. It, it's like glitched for this part. What's his advertisement for? As you turn it off, hear the ad work getting louder. Boom. Set to start central. Like I was saying, it takes a little practice. Try and help you through it. It's super lucky. Believe in the work you Remember, button on the top. Two, 
Why'd you have to do a replay? Um, I can control the volume separately. So. Oh, I see. Beep. Beep. Longer beep. Nobody cusses as much on TV. <laughs> Get ready for your sensor. Nice. <laughs> nice. It is kind of cool how they, they actually let you kind of simulate working in a studio. Yeah, it's, it's neat. Although there's more people. Uh, I'm quiet. So did you have to censor Fanny? Yes. <laughs> Fanny's a bad word. Beep. We're crushing it right now with our sensor in the GMS studio. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Mel B. We're playing a game that's a little bit above our normal PG rating. It's called Not for Broadcast. Or PG-13. <laughs> Rocky said Peter Bleeper. Peter Bleeper <laughs> Pumpkin Eater. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> that one was perfect. <laughs> wow, you were ready for Julie. Uh, I'm on it. <laughs> Yeah, Mel B, we're having a hard time getting the audio to come through. Beep. I missed one. <laughs> you needed a longer beep. It ends tonight. <laughs> oh my gosh, this guy is really on it for the 10 I know. second rule. Yeah, like, back off. I'm on it. it actually is a, supposed to be a news type thing, Mel B. Yeah. But it's not everyone's cup of tea. I, I, I used to work in this environment, so this is kind of fun to watch. Do you have to change out the commercial tapes? Uh, no, I have one more. I, I preload uh, three, three at a time. <laughs> but it was fun. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy Donaldson. Wow. I like crazy Neil sofas. <laughs> Alright, there we go. That's that's perfect timing. Oh, you got a D, huh? Yeah, I did bad on that one. I kept accidentally hitting square, which was the newsroom. <laughs> All 
All right. All right. There you go. That's uh, the game Not for Broadcast, which is our name of the month for the uh, month of uh, March. And so, yeah, there we go. I can still hear the, the narrator in the background. <laughs> yeah, what's that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, camera one. Got you. Hi. Hi, camera one. How you doing? Dave, calm down. Dude. Jeez, Dave. Dave or Bob? Who's better? You vote, chat. Not a chance I'm eating Scrapple. Well, that's not going to win you any votes with Kalaf. Oh, so. Dave loves Scrapple. <laughs> uh, wow, that was fun. That was fun. Uh, I, I think we should try to find a time like to throw that into... Like, just a Discord broadcast, but the problem is if we do that, we need to do Resident Evil Village first, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, there you go. Uh, that was the first time uh, we've done a, a beepy game, but it wasn't as bad as I was worried about, so that's good. That's good. Uh, what I else think, do we need uh, Since you have a background doing this, I think uh, you should play it. Oh, I guess I could. I guess I could. Yeah. Uh, can you log into my PlayStation and I can play it? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Uh, hey, uh, you guys are pretty close with being done with that, I think. Resident Evil Village. Yeah, I think we're closer to being done than we weren't close to being done. I think when I tried to look it up based on, like, a full playthrough on YouTube, I think we still had, like, three to four hours. Okay. It was short enough that I think if we picked a special, like, Saturday, we could finish it. Okay. Uh, you can send me more, Mike, but kind of like you had before we play the game uh we're gonna do the gaming morning show morning gaming renews uh clip of the day takeaways that were pretty okay it was a really fun thursday show thank you chat uh what i love about doing the show is is whether or not chat is uh you know scrolling through a whole bunch or not the show is is the same but you all were very very talkative today so thank you for all the answers mm -hmm. to our question of the day which had to do with what's best on pasta I've learned a term that I'm going to use going forward. I'll tell you about that with my takeaway. That was pretty okay. Uh, congratulations for those who got bingo. You're now entered into a drawing on Monday for a $10 gaming gift card on next Monday's Gaming Morning Show. Anything else to cover? I don't think so. I think it's pretty well covered. All right, here we go. Uh, let's get the news. The uh, video game headlines you need to know, but re-news style. Once again, here's hashtag video game expert Sean. Good morning. It is still Thursday, April 6, 2023, and this is your Gaming Morning Show Morning Gaming Renews. Uh, we talked this morning about Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which is coming out later this month on April 28th. Um, and we're getting a first, first look at the file size, at least for the PC version of the game. Looks like it's going to be a pretty hefty game, sitting at a whopping 155 gigabytes. Uh, if you're keeping track at home, that's an entire 100 gigabytes bigger than the first game uh jedi fallen order was sitting at 55 gigabytes on pc so what will they do with all this extra space we'll have to wait till later this month to see excited to try it uh, i don't think we have the file size on consoles so we'll keep an eye on that and if it's anything absurd we'll definitely update you at that point um god of war ragnarok is also getting a big update this week it's available as of yesterday and that's an update that's going to add new game plus and some other uh, small improvements, including some new armor sets and other fun stuff that was available as of yesterday on PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. You can read the full details about the content on the PlayStation blog linked through the link that we put in chat. And then our last news story of the day, we're looking forward to Diablo 4, as we now know the global release dates and times for the game. The game is going to be available first on June 1st of 2023 to those who pre-ordered the Deluxe and Ultimate Editions. Um, that will be available at 4 p.m. Pacific time. The full game release will be at uh, on the 5th at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So we'll look forward to that in June for those that are very, very excited for Diablo 4, as it promises thousands of hours of content for fans. Out today, we had some highlights such as Curse of the Sea Rats, available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, and Paparazzi out on Switch. But our most prestigious award of Name of the Morning this morning went to Buddy Simulator 1984 out on the Playstations and the Xboxes. All right, there you go. Could become our Name of the Month. If it is, you'll have a chance to win it if you're a Patreon subscriber. But you can also maybe win it if we do a Name of the Month Fulfillment Appreciation Giveaway. Big thanks to our entire fulfillment department for sometimes literally nothing. But you're, you're there and you exist, and so hi. It's good to see you. Uh, also, honorable mention to... Uh, no, actually, you know what? Sir William Lightning Knife, the third award. I'm just going to give it to PlayStation Share Play. 
get it automatically. <laughs> the Sir William Lightning Knife the Third Award. For anti contributions in chat. So, uh, do you have any nominees for Billy Thundergun, teammate of the match? Uh, I nominate Jack for his nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really I enjoyed Jack's flavor of nonsense today. Uh, I agree. We'll give it to Jack. Honorable mention. Uh, Apollo had a good show. Drew Mega, Kalaf, Groggy or Die had a good show. Copia came in uh, as well. Many of you. Just like I said, very engaged in the uh, top-notch chat today. So congratulations to Jack. You are Billy Thundergun, teammate of the match award. many deserving HMs. Honorable mentions today. So nice work. Nice work. All right, uh, what are your takeaways that were pretty okay? What is something you learned from today's show? We'll get to those after our clip of the day. The clip of the day. Hey, look, it's the clip of the day. Doot, doot. Message, it says, on my screen, it says, Hefty Goof is joining SharePlay. And then a second later, it says, Hefty Goof can't sh join SharePlay. And then there's a middle finger emoji for some reason. Yeah, and, and for some reason, it's blaming me. Like, it's my fault I can't join. Mm -hmm. So, I guess and I gotta go by. There's a link to my PlayStation. I, I, go by PlayStation. <laughs> I just I just needed that for the expense report. Yeah. I needed that clip, so that that was more for me, Jim, <clears throat> not for you. So frustrating. Oh yeah. Uh, hi, final hour crew. Hello <laughs> to the final hour oh. crew. Also, this whole time you have a soapbox. You could have been on the soap. <laughs> it's a platform you know in, in hindsight though the reality is I probably would have crushed the soapbox yeah uh, you have three you could almost spread out your weight equally to, to save them uh, maybe we need a few more soapboxes maybe I'll just stand on the shampoo as well <laughs> get off your shampoo bottle hefty Mm. Cypress Coast might have lost all of its scent, but it's also, I think, still very much sealed. So. Whoopsie. It does smell good, though. <sighs> you actually used all yours, didn't you? Um, I still have some shampoo and conditioner in the shower because I, I have it in a rotation with, a, like, a shampoo bar. Nice. Um, but I used all the soaps. The soaps are gone. <sighs> Dr. Squatch soap. Buy it today. All right, uh, what are your takeaways that were pretty okay? And then we're going to send you over to Not Bella 8 This is a suggested channel off somebody we follow who we've likely already visited uh, on this morning radio show that plays games. So if you'd be so kind as to say good morning from GMS, we truly would appreciate that. I uh, will send you over there if you're watching on Twitch momentarily. Not Bella 8 I'm Bella. She, they, a queer lover of the outdoors. Stick around for a gentle community focused content. Uh, more about Bella. Uh, I am a charity and community focused streamer. And I aim to create a space here where we feel encouraged and supported by one another. So there you go. Again, good morning from GMS. Sports Gaming, what is your takeaway that is pretty okay? Uh, my takeaway is the same as Scott Chicks, which might be the same as yours. I can't remember what you, exactly what your tease was, but that's the fact that a group of porcupine are called a prickle. And a younger porcupines or porcupets? Yeah. Yeah. That was a K-Laugh gem right there. Uh, Copia's takeaway is, uh, rather, Scott Chicks, my takeaway is that a group of porcupine is called a prickle. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> there's many takeaways that I have. Uh, Groggy's is my takeaway is that Ryan must shower in the GMS studio and that this chat is my personal journal and you can't convince me otherwise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Copia's takeaway is that where Bob is good, he will never be Bob. Beedy boop, beedy boop. True. Uh, my takeaway that's pretty okay is that uh, Parmesan and butter on your pasta is pasta a la hefty. <laughs> Hearty yeah. or hefty. I was coined by Sports Talk Gaming. Nice work. I like that one. I like that one. Uh, uh, also, a prickle. <laughs> I wouldn't have known that one. That one's great. That one's great. Because they happened on the same day, we should just name it pasta a la prickle. Pasta a la prickle. <laughs> Because the because the, the Parmesan cheese uh, is kind of spicy. It's almost like eating porcupine yeah, quills. Yeah, yeah they're they're kind of sharp. Yeah, <laughs> it's like little bites of flavor. 
<laughs> All right. Thank you for being here. We'll be back tomorrow as we are Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m. Pacific time. Hope everybody has a great Chaos Thursday. Stay tuned for the best moments from today's show. Also, big thanks to everyone who's playing bingo and certainly who's doing the like button on YouTube and Facebook gaming. Those are huge for us. So until then, for Sean, for Austin, I'm Hefty Goof. Goodbye. This has been Gaming Morning Show. No need to worry. That was instant. That it's a fast oxy oxygen flowing machine. You're not real. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <Jack>. <laughs> wah, wah. Uh, do you have something that you absolutely love going on pasta? Um, no, no. It, I don't think so. Because I like most kinds of pastas, even even like relatively plain pastas, like pasta a la Ryan right with like just like butter and um what what do you do like butter and pepper did you see all orion yeah that's pasta all orion that's a famous <laughs> famous italian dish <laughs> uh, yeah butter and parmesan is the best thing that yeah. can go on on pasta see that's perfectly fine too i don't i don't dislike that Stop. at all but i like a good marinara sauce i like a I really like a good like homemade alfredo sauce but oh add Let's ask Eagle Eagle the Mad no. Eagle. Eagle's not even out. You, you, you jump the queue. Man, he's struggling. I think we need to give Bob a vacation. Yeah, I think so. That's where we take him and move him to a box with like some palm trees on it. Yeah, and we'll, we'll have we'll have Copia do Bob's job for the day. Yeah. Copia, do you want to come live in Ryan's garage for a day? We'll make it worth your while. Uh, Grog Air Dice says, Dear GMS, I had a $650 fraudulent charge on my debit card and have went without access to my account for four days. <laughs> now I want Groggy to be like, Groggy Log, Stardate, 4732. Netic eyes. Oh, so you don't eyes, even, you don't even stab the plant. No, no, it's plant friendly. Like you're you're murdering your plants, but apparently that's not. Nope. No, they like it. Mm. Uh, apparently, Groggy said that this is happening on a different planet. That's why it's a star date. Pluto, oh. the best damn planet in the world. I think Bob is still the biggest Pluto stan. Yeah, for sure. Find yourself somebody who... That's the second straight time that there's been a goal yep. at the very end. Yep. Hey, Find, at least we scored, we scored a goal this time. It was 5-1 to one instead of 5-0. to zero. Find yourself someone who uh, looks at uh, the, the planets the way that Bob looks at Pluto. That's, that's not what I meant to say, but just... <laughs> Maybe they go into like a thruple kind of situation. And so it is May... Cody and then they're like other person that makes their relationship stay spicy <laughs> uh, good morning nice chat to I good Apollo it's good to see you this morning thank you for being here nice chat Hostel, you say the only right answer is an egregious amount of Parmesan cheese enough to make it a borderline crime I mean you know you go to Olive Garden and they're like say when <laughs> never say anything. My hands you are going to start a fire. You might want to go get another block of cheese for him. Just... <laughs> was it even on the show? Or it was, was it... on the show. And since that day, <laughs> Apollo has never forgotten. <laughs> Oh, Lonnie is the name of the person who makes the TikToks. <laughs> Thank you, Groggy. <laughs> I mean, that was very useful. I just was not tracking. That's. We have enough toilet paper. <sighs> what? Good to know. Uh, this backstock update brought to you by Bob. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Maybe Bob's journaling too, voice wise. I don't know. Aquinas says, I'm so confused. So am I. <laughs> Thank you, Bob, says Apollo. <laughs> You're welcome. Everyone knows Bob does inventory on Thursdays. <laughs> Saving grace in you, in you. You're the reason why I can open up a dumb world.